audio. Nice. Switch it over. Hello, hello, peeps. Hello. Leg day. <laughs> it's leg day, and then it's also leg day for me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's dual leg day. I'm going to be sore. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Hey, so Carde, you won uh, on the Stream Raider front. <laughs> because it, uh, it reconnected. So there you go. I mean, I guess I could have picked anybody, but I still hit random. It's that's that's a habit for me. <laughs> oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't. Oh, uh, right, Cardi was... placing a unit on your battlefield. <laughs> was saying that. Uh... What was I saying? Oh, it was <laughs> it was. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I was saying that uh, um, the. The link should still be the same. Mm -hmm. And it is. Yes, I'm back. Back and back. There we go. <laughs> I don't know, um, Kamara, if you saw the, uh, the likeness that I ended up posting on Twitter yesterday. But, uh, yeah, I did. It's looking really good. Yeah, I got to do hair now, and it's curly hair. And I think once I get the hair in there, it's going to look really, really good. Yeah, and I think right now, if you were to show it exactly as it is to the client, they may or may not see the likeness, but it's really just because it's gray and missing hair. <laughs> um, right, yeah. Because I think, I think you definitely got the likeness. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think so, too. That's the thing. Like, I did uh, Spicer's trick yesterday um, with, like, overlapping it but also to mm -hmm. um kind of using a little bit of spotlight projection although i was i had a little bit of errors in my spotlight projection but i think it's i think it was just how i set it up so mm -hmm. i ended up uh ended up recorrecting that so but it was it was helpful Crazy. just to even overlay it and just start pushing and pulling i even did a mm -hmm. thing where i adjusted perspective to try to match the camera angle knowing what the yeah. basic camera would be you know which mm -hmm. and then kind of manipulating that a little bit so yeah also hi Carde. i saw you in my chat <laughs> yeah i play with the camera's perspective a little bit when i'm working with a concept that's in very obvious perspective um because yeah sometimes I don't get to have nice turnaround views. Yeah. Okay. I'm posting. Posting everything. Posting the links. Posting the links. Yep. I remember when people used <laughs> to be like, oh, shameless plug. No. But, you know, like... <laughs> right. I'm not shame. Like, <laughs> it's so funny how we would like... People would be so self-conscious of that in the beginning. Right. Now, nobody gives a shit. Like, I'm plugging it. You don't like it? So. Okay. Yeah, I'll just, like... Usually, if I'm awake enough, I'll go through and, like, set it up so I have each Discord server that I want to post in just, like, already on wherever I need to be posting my link and then I just copy paste and go link, 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 link. <laughs> yep, exactly. Okay. I'll just let the world know. Okay, so we're doing leg anatomy. Yep, that's where we're at. I can't even spell. <laughs> We're obviously off to a great start, everybody. Real oh, yeah. <laughs> Just waking up. 
It's a trick women learn early on. We often can't come out straight and be confident, so we self-promote with an air of self-deprecation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, sorry to bother you. I just wanted to let you know that. Yeah. Yeah. And we're we've more recently been taught don't use words like sorry and just. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> I actually like any time. Um, I hear a woman say sorry. I'm like, why are you sorry? You don't have to be sorry. Right. Especially if it's something like in the middle, like we're having a, a basic conversation or maybe they, I don't know. It's like, you don't have to apologize to be you. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. if you call me an asshole and you didn't mean it, maybe say sorry, but. <laughs> but no, I get it. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of societal things happen in there so yeah <laughs> i'm sorry for existing <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah exactly Jesus. although do i for some reason say sorry a lot yeah i've definitely known men that do it too but it seems to be a lot more common with women yeah um I'd say it's uh, some, uh, our sensi sensitive men. I consider yeah. myself a sensitive <laughs> man. I'm a sensi. That's how uh, those called them scrubs. Sensi. Oh, you're a sensi. <laughs> yep. Well, I remember, this like, is... um, in high this school. Is an anatomy model. I like it. Nice. In high school, I was always. Um, like, I never. Like, I hung out, I had guy friends, but I never, like, I wasn't, like, one of the guys who would, like, go to football games or, you know, do crazy sports. Like, I don't know, like, play baseball. Like, I never got into, like, the typical guy stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't, I, didn't end up, I didn't end up getting along with a lot of guy friends. And then the, my guy friends were either artists um, or... Or was women friends. So, uh, yeah, really, my guy friends were just artists, typically. <laughs> yeah. Or people I sparred with uh, when I was doing martial arts. But aside from that, yeah. So I only had, like, maybe, like, two guy friends in high school, really. And then the rest were, were women. Women friends. I got along with women better. It was just easier. Hey, thank you so much for the follow. All right, we're doing leg day today. As I'm ranting on kind of sensitive person I am. <laughs> <laughs> Artists and assholes. Yeah, you know. We, we gotta stick to our own, brother. <laughs> Good morning, by the way. Okay. So I got my protein shake on my coffee. We're all good to go. Um, so today, guys, is leg day. Pulled some uh, leg anatomy. We're not doing the whole foot. That's tomorrow. But... Uh, the whole point of the study, if you're new, is that I'm um, spending the whole week to go through uh, various parts of the anatomy that um, either just for practice or that we find difficult. So we have leg day today, we had hand day yesterday, and arm day on Monday. I feel like this is a workout routine. <laughs> and then <laughs> tomorrow's feet, and then Friday will be um, will be face study, not likeness study. Big difference. We're just going to be constructing mm -hmm. a face. So you can either take that fully stylized, but it's designed to, we're, um, we're just sculpting and then you guys can follow along. Um, I'm joined by Kamara, who is an awesome, hello. talented game artist. Say hello, Kamara. <laughs> hello. So. Also, hi, Zinc and Fanimation. I see you there. <laughs> we see you. We see you. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yep. So, um, and also too, I like taking questions. Kamara likes taking questions as far as I know. Yeah. So if, <laughs> So if you guys have questions about our approach or what we're doing, um, what's neat is we're also doing it two different ways. I tend to use more of a blackout method. Kamara tends to use more of a Dynamesh pull and tug method, but uh, I don't know. Are you gonna try blackout at some point? Um, I'm thinking about trying the uh, mesh project today. Let's see how that goes. Ooh, great. Then I'm gonna have to peek over what you're doing. <laughs> Death wants donuts, but that would require putting on pants. Mm. Yeah, that's a struggle. <laughs> so, 
about donuts. I know, right? Yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll be honest. I get the fascination with donuts, but I'm not a big sweets person. So I am a take it or leave it on a donut front. But I mean, I actually am too. I I have a huge sweet tooth, but donuts are not my go-to. Now, if we're talking steak and eggs. <laughs> what? Oh, you're talking to yourself, brother. <laughs> Nothing truly requires pants, though. Eh? That's right, Nina. I know exactly this where you're true. at. Yep. Um, yeah, my go-to breakfast these days is uh, overnight oats. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, also to um, if Sloby Art shows up later today, I wanted to kind of show off what Sloby Art's doing. It's really cool. But yeah, I appreciate. I like that everybody's taken to this one. Yeah. Oh, so good. <laughs> That's Nina. <laughs> all right so i'm gonna go ahead and i mean let's just start let's just let's get it going so although funny enough i do start my main model in dynamesh so oh i have to put <laughs> make polymesh 3d should do that that's FYI. what keeps crashing my zbrush is forgetting to do that and then i try to sculpt on it and zbrush is like ah <laughs> <laughs> well i learned all these tricks of like you know, from like Michael Pavlovich, where you, you know, do all this initializing. You're like prepping your, mm -hmm. your mesh, you're getting all this stuff set up. And then, um, you know, and then, uh, and then you forget to hit poly match. Yep. And then all that work you do and you duplicated all your sub tools and blocked everything out. And you're like, yeah, this looks cool. And then you pull <laughs> a brush and realize you can't do it. All right. I'm going to start it in symmetry and then I'm going to just kind of block out the base of it, I think. Yeah, thank you for the follow. I thought you were already following me. <laughs> All right, you know what? Actually, I lied. All right, we're going to use a new feature, guys. We're going to use a new feature. Can you guess? Are you using mesh projects? <laughs> nice or are you using the, the balloon mesh? The balloon mesh! All right. Yeah. Uh, Making some orca legs. Yeah. Oh, somebody tagged me in Twitter and tagged me in Pixel Logic and said, hey, thanks for the challenge. I finally did something in ZBrush from start to finish. And they made an orca. And I was like <laughs> really freaking happy about that. <laughs> and it was based off of my tweet that I said to Pixel Logic. I think uh, it was right after the announcement. I was like, I think the first thing we should all do when we get the new ZBrush is make, uh, make a whale. And mm -hmm. this is what this person did. And I was really stoked by that. <laughs> That's, so. um, Living Vertex and I were saying, while we were watching the uh, announcement when uh, Paul Gabriel was going through everything, um, like we were basically live streaming the announcement and our reactions to it. Mm -hmm. And we were just like, oh man, everybody's going to be making orcas now. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just like, well, that's the first thing I'm doing. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I get it. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with mesh project. I'm going to move my... Because, I mean, we might as well use this feature to get all the goodness that you need. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and... I'm sorry, Mesh Balloon, not Mesh Project. Uh, mesh Balloon. And I'm going to start drawing on that. Loop. And... Oh, cancel. Whoops. Okay. I'm actually I'm also doing gonna... mine a little bit different today. I am just mushing things around into the shape of the leg and then I'm going to draw on top of that. Nice. I have my nice leg turn around and see through behind ZBrush. Oh, cool. So this is what I got so far. I already, already got. I figured, yeah, this is kind of a neat way to kind of block some stuff out. Now, even though we're not doing the 
the feet. I am going to put a foot shape in there. Arms down. Mm -hmm. So that's that is definitely something I wanted to do this time around. Yay. Okay. I think I'm gonna have to unify this though. That is one thing I notice is uh the size of your model gets a little weird pretty quickly. Yeah. With balloon mesh. Oh my orcas were massive. Yeah. I started trying to sculpt on them and I was like, where is my brush even? It, oh, it's at a thousand and it's still like looks like a little pinprick in there. Maybe I should make things smaller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about right. This way, like, proportion should be pretty accurate if you, if you block it off this way. Okay, I'm going to cut it off right at the ankle. Okay, we'll try that. Cool. Now I got a leg shape. And then I'm gonna keep groups and I'm gonna dynamish it at 64. And then we need to unify this. So I'm gonna go to deformation and unify. It's gonna make it tiny. But now my brush size will be accurate. A leg. I have a leg. You have a leg. I wanna see your leg. pop over there. <laughs> it's just a weird wobbly shape right now, but it's a leg. <laughs> Hello. If you're seeing this and you're not already on Twitch TV, click here to get the best Twitch experience. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't see what the hell you're doing. Yeah. I'm just go copy on me. Those purple screens are so much fun. Yeah. Hello, hello. What's up, Ryan? Also, happy St. Patty's Day <laughs> for those who celebrate. I'm surrounded yeah. by green. It's not convinced my son. He's pinched me like eight times already today. <laughs> I told him my eyes are green. I said I was blessed with green eyes. You can't pinch me. It's in my blood. He said that there doesn't count. <laughs> I was like, you would he count my green lipstick? <laughs> right. Well, you know, okay. Maybe I'll go get some green lipstick. He'll leave me alone there then. There you go. <laughs> He'll leave me alone then for sure. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and let's hide this. Actually, let's. I'm going to Z remesh mine. So let's get some different colors. I always find when you Z remesh to kind of get different colors, it's helpful. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's one of my biggest complaints right now. Really one of my only complaints right now about ZBrush is that when I'm polygrouping things, it it's like it color codes everything. So it's like it just goes pink and then like a slightly purple or pink and then uh, purple and then purpley blue and it's just like no 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 I need these all to be different colors yep yep I know you gotta you gotta kind of like make it happen mm. although it's funny because if you just hit auto groups right it will make everything a different color even though the shades might look the same it does recognize it but it yeah. causes problems but, like, in I this... need to be able to see the difference <laughs> right but it can also cause problems when you have two polygroups that are different but slightly close in shade. Mm -hmm. um, when you go to Z remesh by union, that's when real problems can occur because then it can't yep. distinguish the difference between shades. So you got to get a good contrast uh, shade in there. 
It's the only way to really do it. But yeah, it's it's a pain. I wish it was a little bit more intuitive, but it is not. Okay. Okay. Very weak legs. Zero one. Boop. Maybe that'll be my first TikTok video. I will. Uh, there you go. I will post progress on. Here's how you make a hand. <laughs> Yo, yo, yo. Hey, Sloby. Hello. Sloby. My hair is down today. Yep. <laughs> Letting it fly. <laughs> hey, Atomic Studios. What is up, dude? Not much on this side. Just doing anatomy studies. Also, Sloby, you're here. Yay, Sloby, you're here. I wanted to tell you. Bloop, 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 that this is looking really good. I really love the idea of this tomato fairy, and I can't wait to see mm -hmm. it. And yeah, the proportions are looking pretty cool. I like how she's a little plump. So I would just say kind of watch the um, the shoulders and the uh, the shoulders, traps, and clavicle area it's looking a little squished there i don't know if that's by design but overall yeah this is looking really really good so keep it up super super excited but yeah that's the only critique i have this right here is looking a little squished everything else is looking great though i always always uh i was gonna say yesterday but i forgot i love the leaf floating above her head it reminds me of a pigment yeah <laughs> I agree. Yeah. No, it looks really good. Looks really, really good. All right. I'm going to go ahead and kind of grab this part here and delete. So yeah, let's just do that one more time. Delete hidden. Close holes. There we go. Yeah, I love the idea of a tomato fairy. I thought that was really cute. Yeah, it, it is really, really cool. <laughs> Keeping them sharp, the scales sharp. That Sub-Zero was dope. Thanks, man. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Wait, Tom Studios Online, you're breaking me out. I thought you were my work. <laughs> That's so funny. They're watching you, Minar. Watching you, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, that's Sub Zero. I'm getting ready for 3D print soon. Um, that's gonna be uh, another Patreon drop. So I'm really excited about that. Okay. Okay. What you typing? Oh, uh, so I should actually show people. Um, a friend of mine, actually the person who made the music I'm listening to, uh, printed and painted my tiki. Oh, nice. And it looks so good. I want to see. Nice. Hold on one second. So he's Hold been messaging me bit. about... <laughs> if you guys want to see what we're seeing and you didn't know we're dual streaming, Kamara's here. Go check that out real quick. You see us there. Tommy Studio was thinking about starting a Patreon. You absolutely should, dude. Yeah, his paint job makes it look like it belongs in a museum or something. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. I like that. That's amazing. And that's that's FDM? That looks FDM. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. And it's about seven inches tall. Oh, hey, thanks for the follow. Who is it? Yeah, that's really cool. Dernier Exile? But yeah, um, right now he's trying to figure out what needs to happen to make it food safe. So oh, that's what oh, okay. I was typing. <laughs> nice. Uh, there should be like um, there should be like a, a, a spray paint, food safe spray paint. Yeah, that's that what he he's looking get. into because there's definitely resin. Like you can coat the whole thing in resin, but that sounds like a lot of work. So he's looking for something spray like. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. 
making sure my size looks pretty close before moving on which I think this is pretty good I would just move the buttocks muscle a little bit because that is part of the leg that kind of hip up there there we go <laughs> nah, but they're always watching me <laughs> oh that's awesome okay Working, I swear. Fire! <laughs> I swear they're always working. All right. <laughs> All right, now I got this. I'm gonna go ahead and actually Z remesh this. So do the block out. This might be my first TikTok video. <laughs> All right, let's Z remesh this bad boy. Keep groups. Uh, FDM is the hardest to make food safe because of how the layers Yeah, because of all the little cracks. That's where bacteria gets in, especially if your printer head was dirty. Exactly. Also, too, mm -hmm. most people's nozzles are, um, are that brass. And brass is very easily chippable, and it, it can get into the material as well and cause, um, uh, cause metal poisoning if not mm -hmm. properly sealed. So, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely going to seal it. He's just trying to figure out the best way to seal it. Yeah. Because, you know, it needs to fill in all those gaps. Absolutely. Cool. All right. I think this is a pretty decent start. If I can just mask it out already. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to use a uh, mesh project. Nice to get the muscles themselves put on, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. So that's yeah, where we're going to go. I'm trying that method today myself. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, very never... different from what I'm used to. I think you'll like it, though. Yeah. Just remember um, to check the thickness of the mesh project, and then you can change yeah, that I, size. Yeah, my first one was at 100%, and it was like... <laughs> yeah. So it makes you just drop the intensity. You should be okay. Yeah. And yeah, for anybody watching who doesn't know how to change the intensity of the mesh project, oop, since it is a uh, mask brush, you have to hold control and then come up and change the Z intensity. Yep. Or you can hold uh, space bar, then press control while holding space bar. Yeah. And that will do so the So long same. as you're holding control while you change it. <laughs> yep. That's what matters. And also too, it doesn't really matter um, if you, like if you're doing a shape and you leave, like if you, as long as you start on the material, but if you go past your shape and kind of draw a mask into space, it's only gonna wrap to what's visible on the uh, viewport. So you don't have to worry about going too far past your geometry. You could just, um, you could just correct that. Just leave it. it. Should be fine. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm a little tired this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to start on your material. If you don't start on the on the mesh, it's not gonna work. Yeah. Just like with mesh balloon. Yep. There we go. So we do that. There we go. Ooh, I think I got Stream Raiders ready already. Ready already? <laughs> Hopefully, uh, well, today, oh, you know, it's funny. So my internet went out yesterday, right? Everybody's kind of noticed that. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, anyway, yeah, internet went out yesterday, and I called Charter, and I was like, my internet's out. They're like, no, 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 there's, there's no outage in your area. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, I've restarted everything, though, and I can't connect. And they're like, no, it's there's no outage. I I go to leave my house and there's a charter guy up at the box. He just kind of like had the cones, everything around, and he's just like frantically working as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, this poor guy. <laughs> I know exactly what's happening. Oh, hey, thanks for the follow, Atomic. 
So the VR, I've been having a problem where my mesh project works once and then turns into a regular mass brush. Oh, okay, so slow BR, you can use, Kamara, Death Sacrament, there you guys go. You can use your mesh project or mesh bal balloon uh, lasso tools as a mask brush because it only works when you start on, when you start on a sub tool. If you start in space, then it doesn't work. It's very specific for that. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. Right, meow. Okay, so, so right now, if I start out here in space, and I start, I can just mask. It could be used as a mask and brush. But if I want to actually project material, you have to start on the sub tool. You can hold space and move it, hold the space bar and then move it, then let go, and it will it will go wherever you need to. But if you if you start in space. It will only mask. Oh, I answered right after you asked, did I? Oh, <laughs> there you go. Well, <laughs> it is a common problem. Yeah. So it's, I think it's something that those of us who mention it tend to mention it every time we use the brush. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was one of the first things I noticed when I was trying to use some of the new brushes. It's like, why is it masking? Oh, wait, do I have to touch the mesh first? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting how that works, you know? But. And I think uh, I think it's just because of how it was programmed, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and what its, its overall purpose is. Dude, I need the Mono X or Mighty 4K. Seriously, yeah. Brother, I, I need... I need that. I need all the printers. <laughs> I got my stimulus check today. I can start doing some serious research. Yay! To printers and ventilation and all that. That's so awesome. Yeah. Mine is going into savings just in case. Mine, I mean, most of mine's going into savings. I'm not getting a $1,400 printer, but. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't judging you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on unemployment right now. It's mostly going into savings. <laughs> yeah, I totally get it. And then remember too, guys, if you hold, if you don't move your camera, hold shift, you can add to your material that you just drew out if you don't move the camera, so. Uh, now I can see why people want two or three printers with different nozzles installed. Exactly, mm. yep. It's a pain to install nozzles. Yep. The more printers you have, the more effective you can be. That's also why, like, people had started, uh, printer houses. Mm hmm Because, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, we could totally do this thing. And, I mean, I get it, but it's a lot of work. I just want a resin printer, and I was planning on getting, like, the Mars or, you know, something along that size. Um, but the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I know me, and I know that if I get the smallest one, I'm immediately going to want a bigger one. Yeah, so no, get a decent size at, one. Yeah, I'm looking at the Saturn or, like, the Epex 10. Yeah, that's um, actually where I want to get the Saturn. Um or the Epax 10 as well because of the size. Because I have the, the basic Epax X1, which is like an Elgu Mars. And yeah, it's just big enough to do cool stuff. But my Chung Lee versus Vega, I had to do mixed media with FTM, uh, even though I wanted it all in resin. Yeah. Because I didn't want to compromise in size. So. Yeah, I've seen, um, there's another streamer I watch that has the epax 10 and as soon as i saw it i was just like that's one of the ones i want i want it i want it <laughs> yeah he's been giving me all kinds of advice it's it's awesome to have okay ryan uh, my brother just bought a house it's an old house but big he was having internet installed they drilled into a gas line all their oh, techs no. were out with covid so they had 
a guy still in training. Oh my gosh. What the hell? <laughs> That's crazy, man. I'm sorry to hear that. Yours went into stocks. No. Oh, nice. Same. That's why I was looking at the Mono X or Mighty. Yeah. Great mid-range size. Exactly. That's what you want. You definitely want that mid-range size. You know. I mean, it's like, I would love a Phenom. I don't have any place to put it A. But let's say I did. Um, for what I'm doing now, I don't really need to do that. You know? Since I just released STLs for Patreon supporters... And then I print it out mm -hmm. myself. I really don't need a giant ass printer. Um, although it would be really fun to have one. <laughs> but definitely want multiple vets. That's for sure. Yeah. Ryan just got to get multiple vets. Yeah. Change in resin could be. There's also a trick too with resin I've learned. Don't. Don't constantly clean the vet. Like if you're not going to print mm. for a while. Like let's say you're not going to print for a couple weeks. I would say don't do it for more than two to three weeks, but I've left my resin in the vat for um, for about two weeks. And then what you what you do is, is you just take a little heat gun and you kind of warm it up and you stir it around and you really just incorporate it if you let it sit for that long. But the reason why I'd rather do that than change it is because the more you change your vat and clean out that film with the isopropyl, you actually deteriorate the the fet life so it's best to not change it as often um, okay. and i wasn't sure about that but resin can sit as long as it's in <laughs> your printer and it's in pure darkness as much as it can be what i do is mm -hmm. i put a box over my printer even though it has that uv screen on it that's dark yeah i put a box over it so it's completely dark and mm -hmm. i just let it sit there my resin's actually been sitting for almost since i printed Chumley vega it's going on two weeks. I should probably print something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think it, um, with how I'm going to end up setting mine up, it's going to be in a window, so I'm going to end up putting some sort of like makeshift cabinet box thing over it with like a ventilation tube that can go out my window. Yeah. Um, with a little fan inside. Mm -hmm. But so it's going to be basically living in a box. <laughs> living in a box yeah ryan i do remember yep. i'm really excited to see your uh experiments too by the way because ryan is messing with uh different uh mixtures for articulation for 3d printing Ooh. uh-huh yeah it's pretty Art exciting articulation is something i definitely want to try but i have so much else i need to work on right now <laughs> so many things i need to work on that are actually related to what i get paid to do well, yeah, one one step at a time for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I need I mean, to get better at retopology and UV layout and all that fun stuff because that's actually what I do. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting is, okay, here here's here's the little trick of the trade, right? Um, you don't actually need to ever test your articulation when you're trying to get a job in the toy industry. I know a lot of artists who have not tested their articulation for 3D printing, just mm. showcase that they could do it in like a blog status or a portfolio piece. And that just shows that you understand the basics of it. And that okay. could be enough to give you a job. You don't ever have to test it. Um, mm -hmm. It's when you're working for them that you start kind of proving and and testing your, you know, testing your knowledge and, your, and the feedback from the directors and such like that. So... But I know a lot of artists. Actually, I know an artist who's working for Todd McFarland Toys right now. Um, for Todd Toys, McFarland Toys. Um, anyway, and we were talking on Twitter about articulation, and I was like, "Did you 3D print it?" He's like, "No." <laughs> He's like, "No." <laughs> He's like, they, "They they send it back to me when it's not working." He's like, "But they kind of also like walk you through their process and show you some okay. tricks and." show you what works and gives you stuff because you're here. You just have to prove you have the understanding. And I was right. like, okay, that's cool. That eased my mind a little bit because I'm actually thinking about putting my articulated Vegeta up on um, on my art station soon, mm -hmm. even though it's not tested 100%. Yeah. Hey, what is going on, art? Yeah. And <laughs> Ryan's well equipped with the heat gun. Hell yeah. <laughs> I yeah. do have a heat gun. I don't have the printer, though. <laughs> yep. 
Okay, I'm trying to make my FDM prints look like resin at the moment. Ooh, uh. how are you doing that, Nina? Are you... What process are you using? I'll tell you guys right now. I'm gonna go full screen. Especially for FDM. This is only a couple bucks. This is your best friend. If I can see it. Wood filler. I got this at Home Depot, $10. It's massive. A little goes a long way. You just take some of this stuff when your print's out. Use your, you know, take a glove, use your finger, and then just spread it in all the, uh, spread it in all, all over your part. Mm. And then after, after that, once it dries, do a light sanding, and it will kind of just, and you remove all this, the, the main surface stuff, and then the wood filler will actually go inside of the layer lines and seal that. Um, and then from there, you give it a couple of coats of uh, primer and a light buff before your main paint job, and you're, you're good to go. That's all you need. Nice. So you can use some of that other resin mixture, but yeah, wood filler. Spread it on. <laughs> That'll probably help for making things food safe too. Um, probably. You still need not, that like, lacquer. Obviously not the, yeah, you still need a covering, but like you don't yeah. need it to be as thick to fill in gaps. Yeah. Yeah, you're still gonna want uh, some of that, um, whatever that food safe spray is. But yeah, that, yeah, that would help. That would help get you a, That'd help get you a lot closer for sure. But all my client work that I've printed for for people, they 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 all get that treatment. I don't do that for everything I do. I just do it for the stuff I really like care about. Bless you. Mm -hmm. End up using filler primer, then the gray primer. That works too, Atomic. That's great stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. I got some of that. That's actually what got me into the uh, wood filler because a buddy of mine uh, a couple years ago gave it to me and it worked out great. But then, uh, then they were out in the beginning of the pandemic. So I ended up just getting wood filler and it worked out great. So how's this blockout method going for you? It's going. It's pretty cool. It's so different from what I usually do. We'll see how it turns out. Don't worry, everything looks like shit in the beginning. So you're- <laughs> Yep. <laughs> uh, that valley of the suck. Yep. I like to make my little planner seal first. Nice. But I'm trying different things and layering. Yeah, try different things. Yeah. Definitely experiment. No worries, I'm not trying to take out jobs of the toy industry. I just want to release my games for free now. <laughs> no microtransaction. I'd rather make money off of the fans that want support. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. I wonder if this is a, Z a ZBrush bug or if this is something my tablet has started doing. But when I change screens or go over to a different uh, monitor, um, when I go to tap back on my screen tablet with my uh, pen, it doesn't register. But that only started with the ZBrush update. Oh, so interesting. That's something I'm going to actually mention to Pixel Logic because I wonder if it is. I wonder if it's just my tablet, but yeah. I don't notice it with other things. I haven't had that issue, but I don't use a screen tablet, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm curious. At the Wacom Intuos, when I got it, it was the 5. It's now called the Pro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Although it's the older Pro, and I learned recently that they don't make this pen anymore, and my pen is kind of getting a little sad. No, sad pen. Spicer made... Place my wake on. Spicer last night, though, made a really good point about not giving out STLs. 
Interesting. Mm -hmm. I am. What was his take on that? I wasn't. I was working and lurking, and then, um, and then I was just not there at my computer. Because <laughs> I actually, I, I agree to a to a point. Um, I don't mind giving away certain STLs. In the beginning, I was giving away a lot of stuff um, because I was gonna make it anyway. I have zero attachment to the thing that I was. I was making. Um, however, as of late, I started releasing stuff only on Patreon for su uh, Patreon supporters because I value my stuff. <laughs> but um, every so, once in a while, I would give something away just to give it away. Nothing mm -hmm. for more than just to say, like, yep, this is, yeah, you can have this thing. Um, I'm curious if Ryan heard anything more than what I heard because I wasn't paying full attention myself. I've been streaming all day. Mm -hmm. But my understanding of what Spicer was saying is that um, if you, well, I don't know about giving it away specifically, but he was saying don't put it on Patreon because uh, people in places where they tend to mass produce things, like they, they steal artists' art and they mass produce things yeah uh get it from patreon whereas i was it go body i forget what the website was called um is less likely to sell to places that do that but then right. also yeah what ryan just said um if someone wants your print they can hire you but with patreon uh you can have 10 people going in on 25 dollars making 25 dollars versus 250. oh you yeah. oh, hold on a second death is going to rouse for breakfast you guys want anything uh <laughs> no i'm okay brother um yeah if someone wants to okay yeah someone wants... yeah i mean yes yeah, there's no there's there's no denying that uh um, yeah there's no perfect way to go about it i think no i mean it's it's but it's the same like my mini factory or thingiverse right how many people mm -hmm. put stuff on there and then all the all the things that get downloaded see i kind of had this conversation uh about about putting stuff up as a photographer because yeah. in the photography world um you know, you have to put up your images at some point. Like, mm -hmm. there's no choice about that. Um, however, um, you also have to accept the risk that once it's on the internet, it's no longer yours. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people who have problems with that. And I don't necessarily disagree with people having problems with that either because, you know, there is, there is like... You know, you spend all this time and money and effort on it. You know, it's yours. Like you, you want it to be yours. Um, but it, you also, at the same time, have to put your work out, right? Right. So this is, in my opinion, where the double-edged sword comes in because no, you don't have to necessarily give it away. But it's the argument of: Do you never put anything online, or do you just accept that the most I might make is a few bucks? But the reason why I'm putting it online is to showcase my skill set. You right. know, I've gotten a lot of commission work from Gwynnum because of its release. Now, I can't argue that they I wouldn't have gotten commissions if I didn't release it. Um, but I've gotten commissions from people who have downloaded it and said, dude, this is really, really good. Can you do me a solid and sculpt me this? So... You know, does that happen to everybody? No, it doesn't. Is it a risk? Absolutely. Um, my argument, I guess, is why be scared of putting something up? Like, you know, value it at what you want to value it as. Mm -hmm. Some things, you know, I throw up, I think is free. I think it's cute. You know, I don't really care about it. Um, the only thing I've really cared about is I made a... Um, when I made Darth Grogu... It was in agreement with Max Davenport saying that we weren't going to sell the STLs. Right. But I wanted to release them for some people to have. And so he said, yeah, release it for free. It was all about exposure for us. We didn't care for anything else. But I've seen people try to sell it. My brother's seen people try to sell it. 
and we've been like, you can't sell that. It's been like the one mm -hmm. thing that we've actively hunted down and said, stop it. <laughs> and my <Yeah>. brother <laughs> finds these all the time. He goes through all these different web browsers. He really hunts it down because it's like, that's it's that one is the most important to us. But again, it was the agreement that we know what happens when you throw something on the web. You know what's going on. You know that somebody in another country is going to find it. It's going to sell it. You know, all you can really do is just kind of hope that more good comes out of it than bad. But mm -hmm. I think you should be cautious that with all that said, you should be cautious with what you want to release. Um, but I don't and agree with doing never things releasing like putting, anything. Putting social media stamps and such on it can help. And huh? like there, there are ways to make it a little better. I'm okay, buddy. Thank you. Sorry, say it one more time. My brother was. Uh, but I was saying, uh, putting things like social media stamps on things can help, and things like that. Like, it's not yeah. perfect. Those can be removed, but it's yeah. better than nothing. I don't know if you were watching me at the time, but this was like a few months ago. Somebody, uh, we were talking about alphas and textures, and I said, you know, you shouldn't use stuff from Google that has watermarks and stuff like that. And somebody right. in my chat said, well, it's because you can't remove them. I was like literally holding oh, my ear. No. And I was like, you can. <laughs> Let me show you how fast it is. And in two minutes, I removed the watermark and they were all like, what the hell? I'm like, yeah, you right. really can do that. But don't. But don't. Like, you know, let me show you that, yes, it can be done. Uh, like a good hacker, I got your back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Just because now you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> you know, that sort of stuff. But yeah, it, it's tough. It's a tough conversation, you know. And with NFTs, kind of like what um, Ninar said here, because people are trying to sell the sculpts as NFTs. That's the other thing, too. You know, there are a lot of people out there who are just stealing art, slapping an NFT on it, and then putting it up. Um, mm -hmm. And my thought on, on NFT is that I don't really like what I'm hearing about with the environmental issues. Right. Um, I know NFT is not the sole cause of the uprise in carbon in, in the air, but it's, but it's not, not helping. helping. You know, there are big, there are bigger things that we need to talk about to in order to minimize that risk. So I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, this is it and I'm never going to do it. But what I am going to say is that, you know, we could find a different method. And mm -hmm. when NFTs level out and become a little bit more normal, then all that fast money that people are trying to make is going to die out and then and then it's going to kind of regulate into something that's more usable right now it feels yeah. like it feels like a, a, a fucking gold rush that everybody's just trying mm -hmm. to make a dollar and most people aren't making money and most people who yeah. are are popular mm -hmm. so here's my rant like Raph Grissetti made a bunch of money but of course he did it's Raph Grissetti exactly yeah it's Raphael fucking Grissetti <laughs> exactly He's going to make all the money. <laughs> Good for nudes, and... too. Wait, 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 what just happened? Oh, yeah, so that's another thing. People are suddenly talking about how uh, NFTs are going to be taken over by porn. And oh, cool. Yeah, I'm like, all right. Doesn't affect me one way or the other, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, if that's how the cookie's gonna crumble. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. But I mean, I'm not surprised. Look, anything. If the porn industry takes it, it's a good motto. I'm just gonna say that right now. Porn industry still sells DVDs. Who the fuck buys DVDs anymore? Right. <laughs> and uh, I just saw Atomic say NFTs basically how the fine art community works. Exactly. Like. Yeah. I that's what I've been saying this whole time is I'm glad that there's now finally a way for digital artists to take part in the money laundering scam that fine art has been for many, 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 many years. Um, yep. But I personally don't want to take part until the environmental impact isn't such a big deal. Yeah. Um, Cause I do what I can to not have a giant carbon footprint. <laughs> and yeah. It would be very hypocritical of me to suddenly try to post some NFTs. 
yeah no i i agree um for me i want to i want to it's more about waiting to see what comes of it mm -hmm. it's like you know yes i could be missing out on an opportunity right as as so many people have told me at the same time is that opportunity worth it i have to invest money i don't have right so there's there's a risk factor and i'm not i wouldn't classify myself as as a risk taker i'm not a gambler um so i think that's yeah, the some of the biggest the... risks i've ever taken have involved education so yeah. like i've taken out loans to get more education makes sense i'm also not a risk taker <laughs> yeah yeah i just i don't see the the I don't see the benefit there at this time mm -hmm. for me to do it. I don't think I have a big enough following for somebody to, I mean, and just even to make a few bucks, I'm not even thinking of right. like hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm literally thinking like just hundreds of dollars. I don't think that would work unless, I mean, unless somebody right now says I'll buy it. <laughs> or if somebody says they'll pay the gassing fees or something. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, again, so I sculpted something for NFT. They, you know, that company hired me to do that kitty mech. That was for NFT. And oh, okay. it, nobody bought it. It fell through. Yeah. But they adorable, said though. they said it opened up doors for their for them to have discussions about other stuff. Kitty mech was adorable either way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was adorable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, money aside, Ryan says, I think NFT has the potential to protect copyrights, tracking the original owner. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I completely agree, yeah. Yeah, like I said, I'm really glad that there's something finally letting digital artists get in on the same sort of things that fine art has been able to do for a very long time. Yep. I just wish there was a better way to go about it. But also, you know, like, just like with fine art, as we've been saying, it's really only going to be the big names that actually make anything from it. Yeah. But it helps with that copywriting stuff, so exactly yep no it's it the copywriting aspect is going to be what's really good um mm -hmm. what what really ends up working and i'm i'm excited for for that aspect of it i think that's really going to i think that's going to showcase well um i think it's just going to be a matter of matter of time yeah more so than anything else what's the inner me look like why does not anybody Show the inner. Okay, let me get the calf muscles in here. Uh, Elon Musk apparently canceled his NFT. I did hear something about that. I also heard that. I also heard though that he's pretty pissed off because he moved to Texas and then hell froze over, uh, <laughs> and he was not happy about that. I mean, it happens about once every ten years, though, doesn't it? What Texas freezing over? The yeah. the what happened I mean, this in was, Texas? This was, was worse than usual, but this was this was unprecedented. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but a lot of that was from them trying to. No, I mean they weren't on the national power grid. Well, yeah, their their gas energy. The company that suffered their gas, their energy is made from, uh, is made from um, uh, drilling and 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 natural gas and stuff like that mm -hmm. or is it natural maybe i think it's something like that it's 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 um okay i'm not gonna speak anymore because i can't remember <laughs> the name of it but they suffered uh, uh they suffered a lot on it um mm -hmm. and the the argument came up this is why we're trying to move to clean energy because of the drilling and stuff like that um but Google it. It's an interesting read. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, one of the biggest issues with the Texas energy issues Fracking. with all the cold and everything was just the fact that they um, they didn't want to have to follow a lot of the regulations about winterizing. So they went on their own power grid and then all of a sudden things weren't winterized when they needed to be. Right. Um, let me look it up real quick. Um... Because uh, it was the it was their only power grid that failed. Mm -hmm. um, I, I 
I don't want to speak on it anymore if I can't get the right information because I don't want to also right. be a proponent of misinformation. But um, right. <laughs> it was the one company that went out and they charged a ridiculous amount of money to get it back on. But it was because it was privatized. Um, I don't know exactly what how they do it, but it was privatized energy. Um, and were yeah. they also the ones that were sending out like tens of thousands of dollars in bills yes no people. they yeah they were the one because um uh my friend uh kana is out in texas and she's on the other mm-hmm. service of power she's like no i i didn't get charged that because i'm not part of that that system yeah she's like i'm a part of the other one and those systems didn't get hit very hard but anyway mm-hmm. um long story short was elon musk moved out there he moved his plant out there he argued against california issues and he moves out there and then his shit gets frozen over um and so long story short he's pretty pissed right now and he keeps changing his mind on so many crypto things too it's like on a daily basis what is elon musk's opinion on anything crypto related yeah i don't know yeah <laughs> non it's non-regulation at the entire point of it uh, yeah thank you Nadar. that's what it is Yo, man, you can't tie up five speed stuff, right? And I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. Well, I'd say look it up for those who are interested. I got Stream Raiders to play. Let's play Stream Raiders. Uh, hi, Gabe Matthews. How are you? Uh, have you figured out how to get sharp angles on the mask panel tool? I haven't figured it out to save my life. Um. Wait, sharp angles? Like, is he talking about, do you like... Mean- do you mean like if I draw something like that? I mean, that's just past things. Um, but like, it, you want an actual corner, not this rounded corner here. And because if if does he mean like um, you can go to so from lasso, you can select it to curve, and then you can actually hit, uh, you know, you. I think it's yeah. You you double tap your 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 shift. If I remember right. Sloby Art! There you go. There you go for the stream rate difference. Boss defeated. I think he means with the uh, mesh project, when you draw out a shape, like if you have a really sharp corner on it, it still kind of rounds it off. Oh yeah, no, that's normal. You, you can't um, get true yeah, sharpness. There's, yeah. That's yeah. like, from what I've been able to tell, that's the one downside, but it's so much cleaner than doing an extract. Yeah, but that's where um, live boolean comes in because then you can mm-hmm. live boolean your mesh, get your main shape of your mesh out, then turn around, create another shape. If you have live boolean turned on and you hold shift with your next shape created, it makes it another sub tool, and then you can actually cut against that to create your your hard shapes. So it's that's another workaround. Wait, did they lie in presentation? I don't remember them saying anything about actually. I remember him showing the mesh project and sitting there thinking, oh, but you can't get sharp corners with it. And he never showed how to get sharp corners. I might have stopped paying attention, though. I don't know. No, yeah, <laughs> you, you can't get sharp corners, but yeah. you can use live boolean to to then uh, create sub tools that you can cut so that you can then yeah. cut out your sharp corners. But there's always going to be some sort of bevel to it. You can't adjust that. And it's always going to round on the corner side. It's just... Mm-hmm. I mean, even if I were to take the lasso, make it a curve, and then double tap, or not double tap, hit alt. Yeah, double tap alt. You still aren't going to get a, uh, a, you're still going to get a rounded edge. You're not going to get a sharp Yeah. Point. You so. could potentially draw it out really, really big. And then when you shrink it down, it'll look sharper. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or clip parts off. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. I would. I would just go with uh, use it to make your main shapes, um, mm-hmm. and get the things that you need blocked out, blocked out, and then start refining it. You know, to you because you can then take those shapes, right? Then you can use Z Modeler. You can actually turn around, increase edges that you want to keep to make sharp. Once you have all those edges creased, then use Z modeler with keep creases and keep groups 
and create yourself a sharp edge. Mm -hmm. You know, but usually you would want a beveled, you'd want it beveled a little bit, even on the sharpest of edges, because, you know, a lot of times things can hang up in corners. Um, yeah. I mean, unless it's pure aesthetics, but I always thought beveling looked, even just the slightest bit of bevel, always looks a little bit better than no bevel. Yeah, I found that with no bevel, when it's all subdivided and smoothed out and everything, it tends to look too artificial. Like, it looks like something that even a machine typically wouldn't be able to produce. Right. Um, or even if it could, it's not going to stay that sharp forever. It's going to wear down. Yep, exactly. Yeah. But so no. I always end up smoothing my edges a little bit. <laughs> I always smooth my edges. Um, although when I get a little bit OCD when I'm trying to do anything that's, um, <laughs> when I'm trying to do anything that is a uh, hard surface, I get pretty OCD with like, oh, this doesn't look sharp enough. <laughs> mm. um, then I realize that I'm silly because, uh, you know, nobody's ever going to look at it that closely. Maybe the guy yeah. trying to hire me for a studio might be like, hmm, <laughs> let's zoom all the way in, but... Right. Uh, you know. Yeah, Gabe says, I usually just lean on the render engine to drive my bubbles for hard surface. That is entirely fair. Yep. I personally can't do that since I do game characters, but I mean, when you do the baking to a low res, that's going to handle some of that too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Nothing's cut at a certain angle. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, we're going. Uh, I want to read what Ryan's writing. Uh, because it's, it's on the NFT thing a little bit. Oh, nice. Um, uh, the general public mining in total, the signing of... Oh my gosh, I can't read that fast enough. Uh, signing an NFT is maybe 1% compared to the mass of crypto farms, which, yeah, that's another topic too. When somebody talks about crypto, you know, we have to consider the other ones, and there's more than just Bitcoin. Um, but if you can make money uh, to plant a thousand trees, what's the matter? I, I guess I guess the question is it's not that I mean we should be planting trees regardless. Mm -hmm. um, it's how fast do they become effective for our environment? How much damage can be done in the amount of time? Like when you plant a tree, that tree is right. not primed for for creating oxygen. So well, and like, you also have to think about the fact that a lot of so a lot of artists are uh, buying carbon offsets because they're trying to do the right thing and they're trying to not have a negative impact on the environment and everything. Yeah. But carbon offsets, you know, just because you're buying a carbon offset, that doesn't mean that tree's actually getting planted. There aren't enough regulations on making sure that kind of thing actually happens. Right. And that's the problem is that, you know, there needs to be a, I think there needs to be a, a compromise and a middle ground of, how things get regulated but i mean yeah. you know it, it, there's more to it this is why i said it's not so much the environment impact for me that's deterring me from making an nft um because i know of like just look at all the look at all the damage we've done to get you know natural gas then look at all the damage that's been mm -hmm. done um with electric cars and the batteries that corrode in the environment do you know, just mm -hmm. take a take a look at how much destruction we've caused just tearing down trees for lumber right. and not replanting when we were supposed to um like there's a long-term history of a lot of damage to our environment that mm -hmm. definitely needs to be discussed and, and looked at um yeah my my big thing is like as far as renewable energy and things like that um we have the technology, we should be using renewable energy by now, but instead of actually investing in things like that, we just keep drilling deeper and deeper to get more oil. Right. Um, and it's like, we're going to run out of fossil fuels at some point, but we keep buying ourselves a few more years by learning how to drill deeper. Right. And yeah. Yeah. It also just kind of feels like, you know, when an, a creature, a human or an animal uh loses joint lubricate lubrication that's kind of what happens when you end up getting arthritis mm -hmm. so i'm like okay you're, you're we're pulling all the oil out of the earth what's going to happen to the earth and that's right. why fracking is causing so many earthquakes right yeah 
I know. Yeah, it, yeah. There's there's so much going on right now. Yeah, and it's, instead it's of a looking, huge topic. <laughs> yeah, and also, to, but I mean, you know, again, we can get super conspiracy on it, and I'm not going to. All right. I'll, but you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we have to we have to all be able to sit back and say, how can we make things better? And those mm -hmm. changes are going to take time, and it's it has yeah. to start somewhere. So. If it starts with NFT, if it starts with people caring about the environment with NFT, even though it's not the main cause, I'd say that's a good start. Right. Let's start there. So. And, yeah, and I'm not going to judge any other artist for taking part in NFTs. I just personally can't. Yeah, no, um, I have no judgment on the but, side of the yeah, planet. But I, I, I do uh, hope that it helps start that conversation. Exactly, yeah. I, I, I literally have... I, I have no judgment. I want people to, you know, I want people to be able to feel like they have a voice, they can live their life, and they can make the, the decisions that they need to make. You mm -hmm. know, I want to talk about it when it starts affecting everybody, you know? It's one thing to be able to say, yes, I, I want to live my life and leave me alone. And it's like, well, while I can see your point, if it affects the whole world, let's talk about it, you know? It shouldn't be just up to one person. Right. Um, so, but real quick, Ryan, you did not hijack the conversation. Do not worry. <laughs> You're totally fine. <laughs> I like so. talking about this kind of thing. Because like I said, I like trying to help that conversation get started. Yeah. And that's the thing, too. I mean, you know, like you were saying about, you know, no, there's there's no need to judge people who feel like it's a good fit for them. If I, Because I thought about it. If I was Raphael mm -hmm. Rossetti, I would have done it, too. I would have yeah. made my own NFTs and said, boom, let's cash in real quick. I want a new house. Mm -hmm. Papa needs a new car. I, <laughs> I mean, before I looked more into it, I thought about it. Um, right, Once me too. I found out that it's like, it's Ethereum and Ethereum's the one that's been saying like, oh yeah, we're gonna start using the, what is it? The, the POS style instead of POW? I can't remember what the acronyms are or what they stand for, but like basically they've been saying they're gonna switch to more renewable energy. But they've been saying that's in the works, long, or almost as long as Ethereum has existed, okay. and it hasn't happened. So, like in the crypto world, that's become a running joke. Oh, that's funny. Um, so it's like, oh, but Ethereum's going to be energy efficient at some point. It's like, okay, but when? <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday. Um... Let's see. I feel like at one point I wanted to switch to making wood figures and get a three to five axis. Yes, Atomic Studios. That would be awesome. You should totally do it. Uh, we don't have the technology to make a complete shift in green energy yet. Um, yeah, uh, I'm but we can we can definitely help. Yeah, I'm a disadvantage in this debate. No, no, no. I, I agree. I think it's going to take time. Somebody, I read the article somewhere and I can't remember where I read it, but you know what would help? So here's my thought. And anybody, go ahead, take this. Take You can take and run with this how you want. <laughs> California has enough desert that is not overly populated. And trust me, I'm living in a desert, so you can, you, you can do stuff to a desert. But California has enough dead space desert. And so does Texas. Mm -hmm. If Texas and California hooked up, had a baby, and that baby was solar panels, Mm -hmm. those two states like, could feed so much energy to the entire country it would take time it would be time to build it yeah but those two states could feed the entire country enough energy for for years to come if they just well, got on the same in, page and uh, said let's make a business together <laughs> like yeah. and that's add in wind farms in wyoming i don't know if you've ever been to wyoming but one there are not many people there there are more sheep in wyoming than there are people and two, it is very windy in mm -hmm. Wyoming. Um, so if we had more wind farms in Wyoming, because there are some, but if yeah. we had a lot more, and there's definitely plenty of space for them um, without negatively impacting too much. Yeah. Because, you know, there are there are always going to be downsides to everything. Um, oh, absolutely. Like Nothing if you do so the big solar farms, you have to be careful of birds flying over because they will actually get fried from the heat. Yep, that um, is true. No, there are definite consequences. Mm -hmm. But is it... But it's like, is it worse to have birds that can't fly overhead and will eventually learn? Right. Or is it worse to burn the entire planet? 
Yeah, that's well, that's the conversation that has to start first, right? Mm -hmm. But then in the U.S., here's the thing that I've noticed is that you you have to have this conversation long enough for both parties and both types of presidents to show up and stay on the same mm -hmm. page, or else it just keeps getting pushed back. Right. You know, and when then there's the whole issue of like people that are just so dead set on being right that they will go out of their way to prove the other other side wrong and like they will put so much effort into proving themselves right that they just yeah anyway I, <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going to give an example on that right now no no, no you're totally fine awake, but... yeah you're totally fine on that um uh, <laughs> ryan said uh decades you have to also think about manufacturing the equipment for green injury produce a large footprint yep yeah actually mm -hmm. i mean that is true too to the manufacturing point california has some of the cleaner air today but they didn't for a long time because of how much manufacturing was coming here and it's funny so many states yelled at california for having such a negative footprint and it's because of all the manufacturing we used to do here mm -hmm. now the states that california has yelled at and said you guys have a negative footprint those are the companies that left California and went to Kansas, went to Texas, went to yep. Alabama, went to Mississippi. I literally worked at an aerospace company that left that left California because its regulations did not permit the footprint needed to make the bolts that we wanted to make for aerospace. So they left for Kansas and then Kansas started. You know what I mean? So it's like manufacturing causes a negative footprint for sure. Mm -hmm. There's no getting around that and with states rights and the way you can bounce around these things um you know you, we're kind of more juggling the problem than solving the problem right. so while california has cleaner energy it's because everybody left who was manufacturing yeah oh yeah in your country you have the full option for green energy but it costs more i could see that Zen. i could see that for sure uh if i own hey, my happy own place How are you going? kind of don't expect to ever actually be able to afford to own my own place but you know maybe someday um you'll get there it, yeah if if i do i have every intention of putting solar panels on my house yeah my gold 1.0 ounce coins and silver bullion have done well for me when gold jumped to 600 in ounce for over Pardon me, wow. For over 1,500, many people said it would drop because it hasn't been saying it for over 25 years. I just, I just saw, uh, yeah, yeah, gold is crazy. Mm hmm. Gold extruder and silver have value in fiat currency. In fiat or fat? Hmm. Literally gonna have. To... Wait, we're literally going to have the power of the sun before we can make a shift to win a shell time. There's a company in the UK already is achieving that. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a, it, science is crazy, man. W uh, T W H is terawatt hours. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, there is so much residual power loss. I've heard of that for sure. Mm -hmm. So, it's all crazy, um, man. My, at yeah, the end of the I day. I we think... don't fully have the technology to run everything on renewable energy yet, but if we invested in researching that, yeah, if we we got we just have to, in my opinion, we just have to get to the point where we're at least willing to have the conversation. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's at the, at the end of the day, I just want to be able to sit down with my fellow peeps and say, hey, let's just talk about it. I'm not asking mm -hmm. to solve it. You know what I mean? It's the same thing with, you know, like gun rights. You know, different states have different gun rights. So, yeah. you know, while there's no fully, you know, workable solution, um, they won't even talk about it. So that's really, mm -hmm. I think that's the first step for any issue that's out there. Let's just get to the point where we could talk about it. And then, right. it's, and then worry about solving it later. There are people who, it's like, if they hear... A subject come up that they have a very strong opinion on they just kind of plug their ears and go la 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 i don't want to know yeah yeah that happens a lot yeah i have a lot of friends who uh before the pandemic we had talked about stuff actually during the pandemic not even before during the pandemic i had a lot of conversations with a lot of people who had different opinions and 
they liked to preach their opinion, but they never wanted to hear the opposite side. Right. And I always, I always felt that that was a little bit, you know, it's a little bit much. Like, I, mm-hmm. I want to talk about it. And the only way you could talk about it is if both people are willing to talk. And yeah. So, I used to have a policy that I wouldn't block or unfriend anybody on social media of any, si- any type. Um, mm-hmm. Because I didn't want to limit the opinions I was hearing. I wanted to hear both sides and I wanted to get different ideas and try to be open-minded and understand all sides of everything. Yeah. But recently it's gotten to the point that too many people are just not willing to talk about things. They just immediately start calling names or... It gets aggressive, yeah. Yeah, and arguing by posting, you mad bro, and things like that. I'm like... You're in your yeah. 60s and you're talking like a 13 year old playing Call of Duty. I'm unfriending you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people want to speak, not talk. Exactly. Then that's the best yeah. thing. Yeah, guns. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Studio says, Kamara, luckily we live in a digital age, so you can find a country where it is true. <laughs> <laughs> Referring to your home, you can get a home. Oh. <laughs> Did I read what you what you wrote earlier? No. Um, I tried to it keep up. It depends on where party. I find a job. Um, I can't afford to move to another country right now. I can't afford to move to another apartment in my city. <laughs> hold on. I think, I think, let's see, card is. I was looking back a little bit. Meanwhile, the annualized uh, terawatts per hour usage of Bitcoin is 130.9. Wow, that's a lot of hours for Bitcoin. Hmm. That is interesting, yeah. Yeah, I can't read and type and think at the same time, Ryan says. Can we put this conversation on hold? We have a little get-together on Discord. We discuss it better. I type 144 words per minute, and I still can't keep up. <laughs> 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 yeah, I totally... Uh, I totally... Yeah, right. No, I would totally love to, to be able to just yeah. hang out with people and have a... We should do that. Um, we should do a Discord... Uh, hang out and just chat mm-hmm. with I think that'd be great sounds like a good time yeah I'm always down to have the conversations with people that are actually willing to talk and listen yeah and just have not a not bury their heads in the sand it's always helpful yeah man no I think I think we should do that like on a Saturday or something I think that'd be great yeah <laughs> the conflict Saturdays divided are my day Saturdays are my 100% guaranteed to myself days off from streaming, too, so it's perfect. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Alright, I am at the point that I think I'm going to Dynamesh this and Z-Remesh and make it all one piece. I think that's great. Yes, son. What's up? Yes, of course you can. Did you have water, too? Water first, that's the rule. Glass of water, then glass of orange juice. You're game, you're game for a good discussion? Hell yeah. I think that'd be great. Yeah, we should definitely set mm-hmm. it up soon. You guys seen those um, 3D printed homes? I have not. Yeah. Just uh, type in 3D printing homes sometime and sit back and enjoy. <laughs> it is really cool stuff. I have seen a lot of really cool solutions for trying to help house the homeless Uh uh-huh um one of them might have been something 3d printed but it was like a little pod yeah they're 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 pretty cool you have to kind of just like yeah they're pretty cool you just have to kind of dive in (laughs) (laughs) yeah 3d printing homes are are a blast At one point, I was very seriously considering getting an RV. Ooh. Because I was like, I move a lot. Uh Uh-huh. I don't need a lot of space. Then I looked into how much it would cost to, like, put it somewhere, like, to live in an RV park type place or something. One, a lot of those places are kind of sketchy. Yeah. And two, they cost about as much as renting an apartment. Isn't that something, right? (laughs) Yeah. You... Yeah, you try to go the 
more affordable route and you still have to worry about worst. that crap. Yeah. It's crazy how that works. And then works. you have to worry about finding places to dump your gray water and all that. And I'm like, hmm, that sounds like a lot of effort. I probably wouldn't always be willing to put in. Huh? Oh, sweet. That is enough bananas. You were going to convert a van. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I should look into Jacques Fresco, I think. Venice, Florida. You're in for, you're in for a Saturday, Ryan? Cool. Hell yeah. Nice. Oh, I also looked into getting a houseboat because I thought that sounded awesome. Oh, but that does slip fees are awesome. slip fees are expensive. Okay, but it still sounds awesome. <laughs> it does, and I would love to live on a houseboat. How many movies and how many '80s movies have you seen where like the the main character lives on either a houseboat or lives in like some sort of RV? Like you guys remember right. *Lethal Weapon* and mm -hmm. how you see Riggs his character and he wakes up on the beach that's how he starts his day he lives in santa yeah. monica on the beach in an rv and he's a fucking well, cop that makes six figures in the 80s <laughs> right like... well a lot of those uh the characters that live on houseboats they're kind of written to be like oh they just live in a little houseboat like it's not supposed to be a romantic thing it's like Right. Yeah. They, they, they can't afford a real home. Yeah. But no, well, maybe, it's expensive to live in a houseboat. Well, maybe in the eighties it wasn't. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's kind of Too funny. Too many of those movies came out. Everyone decided to start doing it. Slip fees skyrocketed. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, Atomic Studio says, I have a mate that lives on a houseboat. It's kind of dope. That is really cool. Oh, that's awesome. You need a large, smooth brush on those 3D printed homes. <laughs> Hell <laughs> yeah, you do. All right. Oh, I think I have seen what you're talking about. They almost look like upside down uh, bowls or something. They're yeah. Like they... really big. Well, so, yeah, kind of. So, um, some of them can for sure. What's interesting was there was a guy in Florida who was a construction worker um, and he ended up making, in my opinion, one of the first successful concrete 3D printers um, and he built his kid a castle mm. and then that hit that hit that went viral, like legitimate viral <laughs> um, and everybody was uh, really excited about it. And then I think that guy created a company. I, I don't know if it's the same guy, but um then it got really popular and then in china they started printing homes um for the i think it was for the homeless um and they mm. could print a home in a day yeah God, that's crazy so especially considering that tiki mug of mine seven inches tall it took a day and 10 hours to print yeah um and cardi just said uh in the 1950s, most apartment buildings had no, had no children policy. Can you imagine that rule today? And, oh, Jesus. Oh, man. Um, yeah. Now we just have the issue of no pets policies. Or places that do allow pets have pet rent. And I'm yeah. like, why do I have to pay an extra $50 a month for cats when another human living here who would arguably do significantly more damage wouldn't cost me anything extra? Yeah. Yeah, that's funny, uh, Zen, because I live in Los Angeles area, and you don't get sh you don't get shit for you don't get shit for seventeen hundred two thousand dollars a month. You get nothing. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe a little a little space, maybe a tiny little space. That's why I used to hate those. Um, I used to hate those. Yeah, I used to hate like Friends and the, the shows like Friends, How I Met Your Mother, right. because they're like, oh, we're in New York, and we have this great big place, and we're super successful. No place in New York looks like that unless you're living like luxurious, right? But then I right. remember oh, one man, episode. A place like that in New York would probably be like a hundred thousand a month. Right, but then I remember an episode. I think it was How I Met Your Mother, where they like removed the curtain and they shot it in like real world New York. <laughs> and it was like the the guy opens the door and it hits his bed and he's like was your bed yeah. always here <laughs> and they like totally spoofed on the fact that yeah new york is not only expensive but for what you get is small well los angeles yeah. is not much better um while there's more space for bigger homes you, yeah you get riggedy wrecked real quick with the 
with it all. I've been looking at a lot of apartments in New York recently because yeah. my uh, the company I was working for, well, technic technically I'm still employed, I'm furloughed. Um, but so, furloughed on unemployment. Anyway, um, that company is in Brooklyn. Uh -huh. And so I've been trying to move up to New York. Plus, a good friend of mine lives there. And, well, a couple good friends. Anyway, many reasons I want to move to New York. And... Yeah, I've been looking at apartments up there, and there are so many that they're so small, they won't even tell you what the square footage is. Mm. Um, what? And it's like, it's really narrow and just like a straight shot from door to window. And there's yeah. like, on one wall, there's like a fridge and maybe a hot plate. Um, mm. And then... There's no room for a bed. There would not be room for a bed on the ground floor of the apartment. So there's, it's a loft, by which they mean there's a ladder that goes up to where you could put a mattress. Wow, that's crazy. So I think if they did calculate the square footage for those, they'd probably include the mattress space. Uh-huh. Um, at which point it's probably like 100 square feet. And that. then, oh, and then they charge like $2,500 a month. Wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Ryan's in the mountains of Pennsylvania, and you can get a decent house nice. for $40,000. But his internet is complete shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once Oz I'm once... in Trenton, New Jersey, and I'm paying about $1,000 a month for 200 square feet. Mm. So it's Lovely. cheap for the area. Yeah. Cardi hits the nail right on the head on this one because we noticed it a lot here in the LA area. Once housing became a, quote, investment, everything changed, and L.A. companies yeah. started buying houses, and there are very few private sellers and buyers anymore. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's what's interesting, because there was already an exposed um, kind of loop. Like, every, when everybody was dealing with housing crisis at the beginning of COVID, and obviously there's still housing crisis at the moment, but when COVID hit, there was so many people asking why can't we just like stop charging so people can keep their home for a little bit so we can get through the virus so that we can get back to work and while some people were arguing the political side um there was actually a thing that came out that was saying that most cities who charge rent that's how their fire department and police forces paid is through companies that rent homes and then a portion of that goes to the city and when it goes to the city it then gets filtered into the city budget which then in turn pays your your pd so it's like it's like a trickle down effect yeah um, so that's that, where the trickle down actually does happen <laughs> right so on a local level that's that's where it starts coming through and um, where i live is no exception and it's interesting because you know again it kind of just put priorities of where people's well it placed where priorities were um right but it was interesting because I started learning a lot more about how and why these companies were able to come in and buy up all these homes and then make an investment. Because when you set up shop in a local and you and you connect with the city, the city says, oh, you're renting homes, you're buying homes to rent. Great. This is how much you pay us. And this mm -hmm. is how much you can charge. And this is what we can do. And then that filters into this. It's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so property taxes and rental taxes. Yeah, exactly. It all it all plays a factor. It was really insightful, horrifying, and mm -hmm. comforting all at the same time. I had all those emotions like, okay, I understand. Yeah. I may not like it, but I understand. But also, right. what the hell? <laughs> and also, oh, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I owned my three-family investment in New York, $14,000 property taxes. Oh, man. <laughs> you still own nothing and be happy about it. <laughs> taxes, this topic is a nightmare. All right, well, we won't talk about it any further. I don't want to give anybody nightmares. <laughs> I still need to file mine from last year. I was trying to wait until after I got my stimulus. Not that I didn't... My income didn't change enough from one year to the next that it would have changed my stimulus, but I still wanted to wait. I don't know why. Uh, um. Yeah. But don't I got my stimulus, now I need to file my taxes. There you go. 
Disarguments! You got some monies! But, yeah, we'll change the topic so we don't give any more yeah. people nightmares. <laughs> Sorry, guys! Not to freak you out. Um, also, I gotta... I gotta get stuff. I gotta get scrolls. There we go. Upgrade my shoe. Yeah, I'm trying to get my first character, my first uh, unit to level 10. Mm -hmm. But I can't get any more warrior scrolls. The store just doesn't want to load warrior scrolls for me. Uh, um, have you been using your warrior? Because the more you use it, yeah. the more scrolls pop up. Yeah, he has the lowest um, reload, refresh time, so he's the one I've been using most. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. He's at level eight. <laughs> you get it. You get it. All right. So back to ZBrush stuff for a second. Um, so I don't know if you want to peek over the thing what we're I here got. For. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you want to peek over what I got, but this is my current block out. I'm not nice. lining every muscle in there. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to see what you got. I can't see what you got. Show me That's... what you got. Actually, very close to what mine looked like before I merged it all together, and now I'm smoothing. Nice. So, yeah, now I'm merging it all together myself, too, and yeah. I first um, Z remeshed everything. Now I'm going to mm -hmm. go ahead and duplicate that. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, plop open the gizmo and send it to its home position. And then I'm going to. Um, Remesh by Union. After I Z remesh, remesh by Union seems to really do a good job. Um, and sometimes it's low level is a little funky, so I'll like go up one resolution before doing that. And then I'll go ahead and remesh by Union. I find it to be a little bit more effective in some areas. But just by curiosity, what is your tax rate for freelance job in the U.S.? Um, so that varies, actually, depending on where you're located in the U.S. I'm in California, so I'm very expensive. Um, so my tax rate is much higher than if I was in, like, let's say, Arizona or even Nevada. Um, mm -hmm. So it's all based on a percentage. Kind of. I, w I wish it was. That's actually not even really accurate there. I base it on a percentage to make it easier for me, but yeah, I would say it... if I were to give you a number, I would that would slap between twenty to twenty-five percent taxes on the freelance job just to ensure I'm pulling even. Mm -hmm. Typically, and Ryan says one last thing, and as unsexy <laughs> as it is. If you learn and understand the tax code, you can actually do more for society better and pay less in taxes. That's how tax breaks work. Correct. Hey, Rush, what is up? Well, yeah, no, they can, Card. I wasn't saying they couldn't. I mean, they're they're not in the way... Well, I mean... I, w I wish it was more straightforward. It should be more straightforward. It is not. Right. But, but anyway... Rush, my friend! Hello, hello, Barty! Hi, Rush! Shout out to Rush if you don't know who Rush is. Um, you know. I don't get to watch Rush's streams as often as I'd like to. Too many people to watch. And I'm streaming too much. <laughs> yep. I feel like everybody here knows who Rush is. Who doesn't know who Rush is? <laughs> All right, so now we've kind of merged all that together. Now I'm going to go ahead and completely remesh it now that it is remeshed by union. You got to remesh it, but you got to take away the groups. There we go. And then you get this bad boy. This looks ugly. Now we get to start. <laughs> Kind of smoothen it down if we want to. Actually, I'm gonna go back for a second. Oh, hello, now you're over here. <laughs> All right, go. gotta move my references around. Do it, do it. There go. I like to use the inflate brush too, if I'm not getting a good mm -hmm. remesh. 
I'll inflate the pieces together and then it seems to be a little bit more helpful. It's neat also trying to just apply the new tools to get more more of a cleaner block out. Right. You know. So there's still gonna be a lot of cleaning up to do, but getting some of the main muscles down and stuff I think is really helpful. So in Belgium we have a lot of social security, but the cost for a small company and individual is crazy. Well, Ryan, um, as Ryan's saying, it sh it actually shouldn't be more straightforward. It needs to be more organized and automated, though. That's, yeah, exactly. That second part is the most important mm -hmm. part. See, here's the thing. High school, at least in the States, the way my parents explain it, <laughs> um, should prep you for real-world scenarios. Here's the problem with high school. It doesn't prep you for shit. It doesn't no. teach you how to balance those fucking checkbook or how to create it an account you or how, how to, to get follow a, instructions kind of kind of not even then kids can just kind of do what they want like yeah i was able to do what i want in high school high school should teach you how to like do things also thank you for the follow by the way um but um that's where it should be and it doesn't and that was the whole point of like having home ec and having mm -hmm. you know econ and having you know government like it was supposed to prep you and it's not doing that anymore and yeah um and i blame i blame a lot of that on on just the uh, people just stopped caring education was yep. started suffering you know i don't know and so when you, when you stop caring about certain things like education and stuff and you start you stop teaching people how to do the basic things you know how many people are prepared to work a 9 to 5 pay rent taxes you know buy food get a car like how many people are really prepared for that not too many so i mean there's a lot there's a lot of problems there and taxes just get more convoluted because the people who are actually writing the rules of taxes i guess <laughs> for setting these up understand it but nobody's teaching it and that's yeah. my, that's my problem with it we have to get to a point where people are teaching what it is we're putting into effect and updating you know the books and while we should want to seek that own information out ourselves um there should be at least some sort of like guidance and when i went to school i graduated in 2001 so getting old um they didn't they didn't do any of that they didn't care to do any of that and that's that's the problem behind I'm seeing. you i was in uh, 06 and yeah i i didn't know anything about filing taxes when i first had to um I did it through TurboTax because everyone's like, oh yeah, it's really cheap and easy. Mm -hmm. And then I had my first contract job and like, I had no idea that I was gonna have to start paying quarterly or anything. Yeah. Uh, or that if I didn't, I would have to pay one giant lump sum at the end of the year. And of yeah. course, people's response to that was, well, whose fault is that for not knowing? And I'm like, I can't know what I don't know. <laughs> right. Ryan here. I, Ryan, I feel sorry for your fingers, dude. He's like, my fingers are getting so tired, but... <laughs> He's like, but... I'm going to try to sound like his fingers, but... If we simplify taxes, everyone pays more. It's okay. But for instance, let's loop back. I'm saving taxes. I'm, I'm planting trees. Not giving profit. Oh, shit. Son of a bitch. Now we're on education. <laughs> That's Ryan's fingers right now. I'm sorry, yeah. dude. <laughs> I, I, I jump around, man. I, that's my head, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop to look around once in a while, you can miss it. Name that movie. <laughs> Hell yeah, son. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it gets pretty <laughs> crazy. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, not even tax related. The one thing that I'm getting real sick of these days is all the people that, for a long time, all I heard was, if you want to get a good job, go to college. If you want to get a good job, go to college. And then recently it's turned into, why'd you go to college? That's a financial trap. Yep. Um, 
<laughs> or, oh, you should just get a job doing roof laying. And it's like, yes, because everyone is physically capable of laying roofs. Right, yeah. No, that education is kind of crazy. What's up, Snickles? Yeah. What is happening? Yeah, no, um, unfortunately, education education's a double-edged sword. I didn't go mm -hmm. to school, um, and that's what's hard. So I, so I did, um, so Ryan, we're switching to education. <laughs> um, He's going to be like, ah! <laughs> uh, so the, the, the problem when I was getting ready to graduate high school is everybody was like, you got to go to school. You got to go to school. You got to go to school. Spicer! Spicer! Spicer's in the Watching house. Watching him and not me Shout again. Shout out to God. Spicer. <laughs> Shout out that mother. Shout him out. What is up, Hoots? <laughs> I know he's on YouTube, but everybody click on his name. Everybody click on his name and say what's up to him. <laughs> but yeah, uh, <laughs> education was always crazy because uh, I did 2D drawings and animation in high school and everybody was trying to get me to go to college. Um, mm -hmm. But I couldn't afford college. I grew up, I grew up poor, conventionally poor. So college was mm -hmm. not an, uh, an option. Um, and I wasn't going to saddle myself with a lot of debt. Um, I was smart enough to figure that part out. But uh, even though, even my parents were like, well, we'll pay for it. My parents couldn't pay for it. Like, yeah. they, they said they would, but th there's no way. You know, of course, they said so that when parents... I was interested for five seconds. And then that conversation right. changed when I was like, I may not go to college. Get out of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> awesome. No, my, my parents did pay for it um for undergrad and then when it got time that i should go to grad school my dad just kept saying oh you'll be fine you'll find a job no problem you're gonna make so much money and like of course i'm gonna listen to my dad right it's my dad um mm -hmm. daddy knows six figures worth of debt and six years later i finally got my first job in the industry that i studied for <laughs> yep Spicer says, college for artists is ridiculous unless you want to be a professor. Yep, it is. I agree. But not only like that. My dad was an engineer and he didn't know that. And I was a kid and I didn't know that. I actually uh, actually um, was talking to a art teacher at a local college uh, just, just before the pandemic. We were just like at a restaurant and we got talking. And he said that he was at the Glendale uh, Community College. And he wasn't even, he didn't even have a degree. He's mm -hmm. like, I just, you know, they wanted, you know, they wanted a teacher. I applied. I showed him my portfolio and said, I can draw and I can teach people how to draw. And they hired him. So I, you may not even need, <laughs> you may not even need a college degree to end up being a teacher. Yeah, I think it depends on where. Um... Well, yeah, if you want to be a legit professor, like maybe Harvard, that's probably a different conversation. <laughs> yeah. Be the best. Yeah. The spice, yeah. Ryan has we, <laughs> we've tired out the uh, Ryan's fingers. <laughs> we've had all sorts of crazy <laughs> conversations from taxes to 3D printing to uh, energy to just everything, man. Just yeah, whatever's been in the local news in the last couple weeks to NFTs. Um, yeah, we've talked about it all, and Ryan yep. can't keep up, <laughs> he's tired. This is. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you can tell that I'm actually tired is when my when I start jumping from one topic to another that's when I'm tired like I start my brain gets more hyperactive and can't oh. focus on one conversation I start causing more than one conversation to happen at the same time for me <laughs> this is a Wednesday <laughs> <laughs> this is this is my brain normally I mean, this is my brain normally, but a little bit more tired than usual because I stayed up till like four in the morning. <laughs> yeah, most of what people, uh, most of the people that were managers at one of my jobs had like UK equivalent of community college qualifications. Yeah, isn't it crazy that also to, I mean, here in the states, if you go to college and just get a BA, it's almost not worth anything these days. Oh was yeah, a, um, a Michael's the craft for three years. store. Michael's the craft store actually requires a bachelor's degree for cashiers. No, oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, a friend of mine a friend of mine was applying there. She only had an associate's degree and they wouldn't hire her because she doesn't have a bachelor's. 
Well, then I'm never getting a job. Freelance for life. <laughs> <laughs> Spicer was. Well, now a... she does. Uh, she does prop painting for. Um, she was working on Fear the Walking Dead for a while. So. Good for her. Um, Spicer was an adjunct professor for three years. I told the students at the beginning of the semester if they are here because their parents said so, leave now. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't part that. <laughs> you can learn everything online for free. Absolutely. I... I genuinely wish somebody had told me that. Yeah. This is where, I like... I didn't know that until I was already in grad school. Yeah, see, this is where, for me, I'm starting to kind of, like, say, okay, yeah, I did not need to go to school for this. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I didn't go to school for this. But it is still ingrained in the back of my head. Should I have gone to school? I don't know. No. I mean, you know, yeah, that's... It's it's weird because that's all I that's all I heard my whole freaking you know high school career go to college mm -hmm. go to college life will be better if you go to college yeah okay okay um, I did not go to college so I so I can't know. say I regret the path I've taken to get to where I am right now because I like where I am mm -hmm. but I I do wish that I hadn't gone to college because I think things might have ended up getting to where I am faster, maybe. Hmm. Uh, but at the same time, it's hard to say. Like, it's impossible to speculate. Can't go back in time. No. Um, I would say college might be good for networking still. Yeah, I will say that... So my undergrad, bullshit. I didn't learn much of anything from there. I learned a little bit about animal anatomy because I actually have a bachelor's degree in zoology of all things. Wow. Um, nice. Which is why I now do creatures and characters. But uh, That makes sense. I really didn't get a whole lot out of my bachelor's degree. And like the way my uh, undergrad was set up I didn't even know that I had an advisor until I was about to graduate and they were like, you need your advisor to sign off on this. And I was like, my what? Well, who's that? <laughs> um, and then I, when I went and met my advisor, she was like, you're never going to find a job doing this. And I'm like, doing what? I don't even know what kind of jobs there are. Like, do I want to work in a zoo? No. What else is there? Um, That's crazy. Like, I hadn't considered what I might want to do for a career. I just went, I like animals. I'll study zoology. Right. Because I was 18 and I didn't even know that maybe I should think about what I want to do for the rest of my life. I was just thinking, well, I'm going to college. It's just fancy high school. Yep. Hey, if YouTube was Eva! around. Evo. Uh, well, whoops. If YouTube was around. <laughs> um, when I was in high school, I would have been a straight A student. <laughs> Just because I had the drive to learn, but I did my teachers not. made it complicated. And so I was always struggling with trying to find better resources and better information. Mm -hmm. And But there was no internet when I was in school that was useful like it is today. And right. Like, that... we didn't have YouTube. We had albino black sheep. <laughs> oh, hold on one second. Hold on. Spicer. This is our song, bro. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, right. I, love I this fully song. agree. I also learned more from the Pixelogic streams than I did in college. Um, I I, <laughs> I got a lot of decent networking in. I met a lot of really cool people who now have really cool jobs. Axel, hello. Um, like I know people that work at Riot and Naughty Dog and Insomniac and all these big studios, but I wasn't able to make use of that for so long that I've lost track of a lot of them. And mm -hmm. I probably would have been better off if I hadn't gone to school and wasn't in so much debt. Hmm. But at the same time, it, I try not to speculate on that because, again, I like where I am right now and I don't know if I would have ended up in the same place. Right. It's it's hard to, it's hard to say. Look, I mean, yeah. you know, I, I fell into aerospace and then... Um, by doing so, um, I basically just kind of stayed there for about 12 to 15 years. 
because mm -hmm. I kept remembering that, oh, well, you need a degree to do anything else. And I was looking at all these schools and I couldn't afford $90,000 to go to school. Right. You know, especially having babies, you know? So it's like, all right, what do I do? Like, what, what do I end up doing then? So, but now it's interesting because when I did more research on how to start becoming Yay! a sculptor, um, it, it got a lot easier once I started deep diving. And then when I went to Shane Olson's class, I, st I researched his thing for like a year. Mm -hmm. And it was because 700 bucks was too much money for me to spend willy nilly. But it was right. like, at the and end I'm of the still day, looking at it going, I want to do this, but $700 is a lot. <laughs> right. But what I would now, if I'm going to be 100% honest with you, it's like you already have a lot of the skill set that Shane teaches. So for you, right. I've realized at this would, point, I need somebody to help more with like the technical things and maybe more networking. That, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, networking for sure. Mm -hmm. But that's where Spicer comes in. Yeah. <laughs> He's your buddy. Um, Spicer and everyone else in the dojo and Anna and all the people I've been meeting on Twitch. And yeah. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Also, like, hi, Shabby. There's definitely a lot of, um, there's a lot of networking and stuff that would be more beneficial for you, if anything else. So, you know. Although, I mean, if you want to really hone in on stylized characters, Shane Course is perfect for that, you know? Um, I said Eva. <laughs> Eva! Or are you, are you a hemming at the question? Uh, Eva wants to know, did you just say you accidentally fell into aerospace? <laughs> I did. I accidentally fell into aerospace, yes. Um, <laughs> by that, I mean that uh, when I first got married... Um, you know, I needed a good job, and uh, her dad worked at the uh, worked at an aerospace company and said, "You need a job. I can hook nice. you up." So yeah, I just fell into it. Hey, Metal I Dragon! Fell I fell am... into doing caricatures, but it was it was art, so people aren't as confused by that. Yeah, um, I am making a leg. This is leg study. So what we did was we. Uh, this is Kamara. She says hello. Um, so Hello. what we did was we <laughs> were taking anatomy, uh, just studies, so I took an anatomy uh, chart of the leg, kind of used the new features to mask out the shapes that I needed, and then from there, went ahead and started refining the shapes a little bit more, then started applying the muscle structures as I would see them, then refined, uh, zebra meshed, built it together, and now I'm actually smoothing it out. So this is... this. These streams are leg studies at the moment. Yeah. So it's leg uh, day. Yep. Yeah, today's leg, leg day. Yesterday was hands. Monday was arms. Tomorrow will be feet, and then Friday will be face. We won't be covering the torso um, due to Twitch's nipple rules. But <laughs> <laughs> um, also, too, we just oh, won't be man. covering it because we've covered that a lot. Um, at least I have. I mean, every character I built, I'm always like, this is how you build the torso. So. I feel I find the torso to be a lot simpler because it's just a nice body mass that you have to end up shaving. But maybe at some point, um, maybe next week we can like do the torso a little bit more in depth, hmm. just because I would like actually like to refine my my back anatomy a little bit more. So maybe mm -hmm. maybe next week, if you want to join, we'll do a little bit yeah. of uh, we can do that. But hitting the, also, hitting the big to ones. to answer your question, I am doing well. I'm a little tired today because I stayed up way too late last night, but that was my own fault. <laughs> I was having too much fun watching you play Fall Guys. Uh, how long have I been 3D modeling? Um, I have been 3D modeling for a little over four years now um, for ZBrush, but I have I used to program and 3D model for aerospace uh, prior. So I did that for eight years. But for ZBrush alone, it's been four years. <laughs> Organic modeling, I've been doing it for four years. When you stop and think about how long you've been doing something, do you freak out? A little bit. Um, <laughs> partly because I'm like, has it been that long? But then I also think about the fact that for me, like, I started learning Maya in 2011. But I've had so much time off 
in between that I'm like, if you add it all up, in the time that I've actually been actively doing 3D modeling stuff, it's probably been about four years. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, Cause right. like I'll take whole periods of like nine or 10 months off because I was working at Six Flags and just didn't have time or energy to do anything until the season ended. Mm. <laughs> right, it says, oh, for frick's sakes. <laughs> One of my side projects is so flipping specialized for the networking conversation, but I'm wearing, I'm wearing now, I need a five hour or three hour, I mean, 12 years. 12 years, man. Nice. Professionally, anyway. Nice. Professionally, I've been doing it for just under a year. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. Um, Chubby says, dragging ass today. Had so much fun last night. Yeah. Chubby was playing, uh, the Chubby Samurai over here was playing Fall Guys last night. Had his first win, and it was awesome. Oh, nice. All right, so now, real quick, I'm going to explain what I'm doing so people are wondering. So, we've blocked out the anatomy based on an anatomy chart, but now I want to refine the leg. And the way the skin falls over the muscles is very specific. And um, what I like to do is go to bodybuilding references and pick something that's kind of nice. You can even go, hey, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, you can even type in if bodybuilding is too big and bulky. You could do fitness um male model leg you can get more specific in the search and get something that's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing but still gives you the muscle shapes and how it would and how it would actually sit so something like this i would pull for reference in order to kind of see how the skin is going to lay on the muscle and for the most part you don't need to get too many different angles in my opinion you just kind of need to get something that's a little bit more uh from like a couple angles and then once you kind of understand how the skin falls on the body it'll be a lot easier to just apply that technique all the way around and then of course however muscular you want it will depend on how cut your straightation lines are or how long you make them so you need a five hour energy shot yeah i figured you were so tired you didn't even finish your sentence bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah just don't mix five hour energy and monster they do cancel each other out i am living proof that uh that happens so don't do that so but it's important to know how the um how the muscles lay out and also too you know even though i blocked out my muscles um the size of the muscles are completely a little inaccurate they're all over the place but the placement mm -hmm. is what's more important so Try not to go su super focused on where, or I mean, exactly how the muscle, how big or small it is. It's more important to focus on the placement of the muscle and kind of watch its tr uh, transition from one point to the next. It kind of works itself out. When you start blending, you can clean a lot of that up. If you get the placement right, then you can correct it as you as you blend. So, little tips so, that so have helped thank me. Thank you for the hydrate. And uh, Chubby, so Chubby just asked, what's the hardest part? to do for when we're sculpting different parts of the body. Uh, we were actually just talking about this the other day. Um, most people seem to agree it's either the face or the hands, or possibly the feet. Yep. Um, in my opinion, it, for between face and hands, it depends on if you're sculpting a face or that face. If you're trying to go for likeness and you're sculpting a specific person, the face is definitely the hardest. But yes. if you're just doing a face, hands for me are harder because reason being, if it's a specific person, you know what that person looks like. And if it's wrong, you're going to see it. And you might not be able to see why it's wrong, but you're just like, that doesn't look right. It's off. Yep. Um, whereas if it's just a face, well, so long as you got the anatomy structure correct, you're good. Yep. With hands... Your hands are, you may not think about this, but your hands are almost always in your own line of vision. So you know what hands look like. So if somebody does hands wrong, it's very obvious. Correct. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. I'd also say face is simple in my opinion, because um, it is mathematically proportioned to itself. So mm -hmm. you can take a head, divide it in half and then you could, you know, then you can turn it to the side, take the face, you know, divide that into thirds, 
and those third placements from there will actually give you the ear placement, the eye placement, the nose placement, the chin placement, the hairline placement, the eyebrow line. That right there, if you just start taking your head shape and divide it into thirds and then divide the whole head into quarters, you can basically map out everything. For eyeballs, um, usually the eyes are if you, the head is five eyes across and if you stick one of the eyes in the middle of the head that's the space of two eyes and then so you can really just mathematically symmetrically block out a head real fast it's when you start getting into the finer details of making it look like something that maybe people mm -hmm. would recognize that starts getting challenging but as long as you get the mathematical proportions correct and the volumes right a face can be blocked out and shaped real easily. And because, you know, if you get, especially if you're doing stylized, then you get to exaggerate some of those mm -hmm. forms and make it really look interesting. And yeah. you have such control with how you can make that face look big nose, small nose, buck teeth, no teeth, eyes <laughs> bulging out, you know? I mean, it, I, I feel like it's just, it's easy to, to just get lost and create something that's awesome as long as you first set the foundation. And yeah. I think that's the hardest part for some people to grasp is the foundation. But once you get it, I find it to be very simple. Mm -hmm. So that's my take on it too. Yes. Citizen Mac, yes, of course. We, we can't skip leg day. Um, no. <laughs> and uh, Chevy says, oh my gosh, that all makes so much sense. So it's the likeness aspect that creates trouble. It's beyond interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, uh, anybody that's looking at my screen right now, I have a picture of the, we were talking about the difference between male and female musculature the other day. Um, this is actually a really good example of it. These two are both bodybuilders, but you can very easily see which one's a man, which one's a woman, because the man has more vascularity, the man has a lot more defined chiseling of muscles. The muscles are all still the same. They're all still there in the woman but without as much testosterone, they just don't get like this. Yep. Death and Kamara, you guys want some stuff? <laughs> I really yep. do need to just keep placing two units, don't I? Yeah, you're, you're really good on that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I completely agree too. That's a big, I mean, that's a, that's a fitness conversation all in itself is that, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people who um, would advise women to lift heavy because it actually helped you burn more calories and mm -hmm. earn more endurance to get more energy and stay in shape longer. Um, but the fear, the common question women will then ask is, well, won't I get bulky? Um, unless you're taking, you know, testosterone. No, you don't have the testosterone in order mm -hmm. to get bulky, not by, not by natural standards. So, so yeah, you won't get nearly as, as masculine as a man would. But um, so, yeah, that's a clear sign of uh, um, and some clear women indicator. do naturally have more testosterone, so they might get bulkier, of but course. without actually supplementing that testosterone, your chances yep. are very slim. Yep. And uh, to Ryan's point, because Ryan said women are built for uh, for stained energy where men are built for burst. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. um, that's why women hold on to to fat a little easier than men and that's why it's more dangerous for men to hold on to fat because mm -hmm. you know um where how we build fat is actually internal more towards the organs women build fat more naturally um externally so more towards the skin and those differences are are more to that point you're, you're just built to women are built to sustain or men are built for brute strength to, to move heavy <laughs> <laughs> to get things going. Move that tree, bastard. Get it going. <laughs> I got you. The <laughs> I got kids to rage. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's all, yeah. It's all very interesting uh, in its design. So. Citizen Mac just had delicious dinner. What'd you have? A uh, real quick tip for building up skin, too, uh, so you're not bit wasting your forms is um, I'm still in Dynamesh at this point. I'm getting ready to move out of Dynamesh. Um, but take your Z intensity um, and really drop it low. So that way you're, uh, so that way you can actually build up very small layer lines or layers of your, of your, um, of your skin. But then if you do like a, like a 
patching kind of look where you go like 45 degree one angle build up then go the other way you can almost start to create natural pores within the skin mm -hmm. if you don't smooth it out so that's kind of something i've really played with a lot but now yeah, that this is this is merged i should probably save it's been a while <laughs> oh yeah, I haven't done that at all yet today. But what if you drink Brondo? That's a great question, Cardi. And it's, <laughs> you know, Brondo is what plants crave. So you're good. <laughs> but this is also where I would say move to subdivisions because subdivisions will also allow you to control how much material you can apply back to your model. Mm -hmm. So... Once you get it relatively cleaned up in Dynamesh and, and merged together and it's looking like the thing you want it to look like, you can then turn around, Z-Remesh it, project details back, and then claim it up. So let's go to Z-Remesh. And also too, while you're here, you might as well create UVs if you want to texture it in another program. Mm. So I have a theory, Kamara. Oh. When we start talking, it's just it always goes to like really cool, fun, in depth conversations. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like agree. it. It's awesome. <laughs> and then Ryan can't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> and we burn Ryan out. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. We'll slow. We'll slow down a little bit. <laughs> I'll try. Can't make too many promises. Although these conversations is a a small taste of what it's like being in the mind of IR. It's like all I? over the place. Yeah. Yeah. I always say my brain feels like a beehive and each thought is a bee buzzing around. And the only way I can actually have conversations with people is if I can like track down one of the bees and kind of follow it for a minute. That's interesting. That's a really interesting take on it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If I'm oh. tired, the bees tend to be more active. I can see that. Yeah. Now, did you know about projecting um, before with projecting you used to have to like go up into one subdivision and then project and then subdivide again and then you'd have to step up and project each time you step up here you don't do have you to not do have that to anymore no you can step up so i'm gonna step up i don't know if you want to watch it but um yeah. i have my leg over here that is that is dynameshed i'm gonna kind of screen grab it real quick so you can kind of see. So here's my Dynamesh leg. And then here's my Z remesh leg. So I'm just going to divide up one, two, three, subdivision four. And then, so this is just a subdivided leg, not projected yet. Then I'm going to go to projection now. And then I'm going to go ahead and just project all. Making sure that that leg is the one that's there. And there you go. Now we're projected. Oh, wow. So... It's very, very helpful instead of having to subdivide, project, project subdivide, subdivide, project, yeah. subdivide, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely Oh, man. Changed. That's so handy. You're unfamiliar with Brando? Oh, it's from Idiocracy. Yeah, Mike Judge film. <laughs> For sure. Gotta watch it. Oh, no, no, you're great. It makes a great and entertaining stream. Awesome. Well, I'm glad it makes a great and entertaining stream. Um, I love talking about this stuff. I also just don't ever really want to overstep and offend anyone either you know i try to keep my streams art focused mm. but i feel like too it's just you know everybody's in a place to kind of want to talk about things so i'm yeah. okay with talking about you know what's going on in the world today so citizen Mac sent me a picture of his dinner it looks super tasty nice. now i want some chicken <laughs> some chicken that sounds delicious All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and I always take my um, I always take my forms, uh, my body parts. I always take them very muscular and then I start tapering them back when um, I do that a lot, too, even when I'm doing female, which we keep mentioning tend to be softer. Yeah, just tend to have to soften them more. <laughs> but it helps me understand where where I'm at. Mm -hmm. and then also too normal smooth doesn't work as well on subdivided models so that's actually really good to like just crank up the regular smooth 
so then you can still do your thing where you like uh, add in some clay a little bit and then relax smooth so that way you're you're able to kind of still get cleaner results but it's not going to hit it so hard because right sm smoothing 500,000 polys is a lot harder than smoothing 20,000 and that's where smooth right. stronger comes in if you want to really get like things moving at subdivision four Cardia has gnocchi waiting. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. It's all part of art. People will forget what you say, but they'll remember how you made them feel. As mm. an artist, you're a master at making people feel. Yeah. That's, that's actually a really great point. That's a really good takeaway yeah. on it. Yeah. Leftovers for the win! Exactly. That was actually, that exact phrase was something that we said a lot when training our caricature artists. Um, so we just, like, it wasn't even so much about the caricature itself. It was about making sure the guests had a good experience because yep. the caricature could be very mediocre, so long as it looks like a caricature. Um, right. It could be very mediocre. If they had a good time while you were drawing them, they're going to think it's the best thing ever. No, that makes perfect sense. 100%, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you know. I mean, because at the end of the day, people just want to have a good time. Uh, mm -hmm. People do want to conversate. I think it's more of like, some people don't know how, you know. It, it, sometimes it's hard to get the conversation started. You right. Know? So, I just, what I've always wanted to make sure, too, is that um, I don't want people to feel like, you know, I'm using a platform to spread my opinions. Right, yeah. You know, I've always wanted to kind of avoid that because that's not mm -hmm. ever my in attempts, you know, but because these are, yeah, you know. I always, okay. I always try to slow down for, especially with people like Ryan saying, oh my God, I can't type fast enough. I do try to slow down. My brain can't always, but I try because like I, like you said, I don't want it to be my platform. I want to have a conversation. Exactly. Yep. Because exactly. I'm all about always learning. Yeah, absolutely. And that's always the artist I've ever wanted to be. The person mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be was just to learn. Learn from my mistakes. Because I've made a if good it chunk was, of them. <laughs> if it was a viable career option, I would be a perpetual student. <laughs> right? I think, too, that's actually going back to the education thing for two seconds. That's actually, right. I think, a thing that has happened. I knew a lot of people yeah. who were professional students. That's all they did. They got their masters and, you know, good for them, Keep I guess. Getting but... grants and scholarships and loans. Yep, and... yep exactly. Slow says, Mech says, same here, but at some point I learned <laughs> to type super duper fast and feel accomplished when I can keep up with someone talking. Nice. It's okay. Well, it sounds like Ryan can type super fast. It's just that he's been typing a lot this morning. He really has. We've been putting him through the paces. If there was a <laughs> Olympic uh, keyboard sport, he would he would really be on it. Because also too, yeah. it's not only that he types fast, is that his grammar is pretty damn good too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, and careful. he's keeping up with two people talking. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and the constant back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, you guys are really good at it, and you are a perpetual student. Hell yeah. Hooray! Hell yeah. Yeah, don't give me a big head. I don't need it. <laughs> Citizen Mech feels challenged now. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. No. <laughs> You know, so I actually, I thought about it this morning before I started up the stream. I really want to know what that one guy was talking about the other day when, when, um, he was talking about the, the Russian Ecrochet. Is there like... Yeah, I was thinking about that last night. Yeah, I think we're going to have to do a quick little Google search here in a second. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm very curious about it. Oh, thanks guys. Yeah, dude, Ryan. I enjoy these actually, conversations maybe I should... so much. I'm going to do the Google search off screen really quick just to make sure I don't have any nip slips. 
Yeah. Um, Good idea. Okay. Um, for anybody who has not heard, uh, I so I tend to stream a lot with Living Vertex, who is another 3D artist. Um, we went to school together. <laughs> he got what he's calling a three-day booby ban because he had under boob showing by accident on his stream for <laughs> a few seconds. Um, was it a real it person? Was- Reference. It was. It was the reference image for a character he was sculpting, and it was. It, but it was just the underboob. There was no nipple. It was just underboob. So stupid. Yep. <laughs> and so then it just becomes, like they say, no nudity. Okay, cool. But what does that mean? Where's the line? Right. Yeah, that's. Yeah, where does that? Know, so we don't do it by accident. Yep. Because again, you know, I'm seeing the hypocrisy of. You know, there's a couple fitness guys I like to watch on uh, Twitch who they stream for three hours and they're shredded and they have tanks and mm-hmm. when they're working out, their nips are showing. Like, there's no difference from one nip to another. So why right. do they get to and show it? I was talking to some of the European sculptors yesterday and they're like, okay, but what about people playing uh, Conan, the new game that, you know, there's glass and pee pee. Yeah. Hey, what about them? Twitch gods are fickle masters. Damn it! They are. <laughs> also, I have some. Uh, I googled Russian ecroche, and I mean, it just looks like ecroche. Oh, know. it just looked like an ecroche. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if there's like anything specific he was talking about. I was wondering if maybe he thought I was making an ecroche, and then I started taking it in another direction, and then maybe he was like, "Oh, okay, never mind." I was just curious because you know, yeah. like. You know, I mean, at the time Scott too, I was here. I was finishing the block out, and then I was moving on to fi- finishing the rest of the forms. Right. You know. Well, you know, having the difference between an ecroche and what we were making, we had skin. Ecroches tend to not have skin. Correct. Yep. Um, some people go far enough to put the layer of skin on, but it depends on the artist. Yeah, right. got Scott, Scott Eaton's Ecrochet up here right now because it's just awesome. Oh, here, let me take a peek. If it, Phil let me. Ooh. Oh, yeah, you do. Nice. Yeah, that's a nice one. So people who aren't seeing As... the restream can see what I am seeing. Yeah. You see. Yeah. I scrolled down a little too far and saw PP for a second. <laughs> oh, At least no. it was a sculpture. She'll be okay. Yeah. But no, that's There's some that, tiny ones there, but yeah. Yeah, that's looking really cool. And that's the thing, the torso yeah. is very advanced too, so maybe maybe we'll do a torso one like uh, next Tuesday or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. Just don't put nips yeah, in I like can... I did Grogu. Right. I can always use more help with the back. Ooh, let's not use this one as a reference. Um, but yeah, I can always use more help with... I mean, we can all always use more help anatomy oh absolutely i tend to not pay as much attention to the back as i do to the chest and ab area oh interesting i don't know why i don't know if maybe it's just because it's easier to find references for the front maybe i mean the front is always um the front is always in my opinion the easiest to reference because Mm -hmm. all you have to do is type in six pack there done yeah no atomic studio i think i have that one too as well but i yeah i have that one as well um it's funny actually that one was banned in the u.s for a little bit not quite sure why i had it and then i couldn't download it for a while and then i got it back Mm -hmm. um but um i think a goal a lot of artists give themselves when doing human uh human anatomy is to build their own ecroche yes that's a big big goal i i made my own out of clay when i was in grad school um i really want to do another one in zbrush haven't gotten there yet hopefully will soon um i've got so many other projects going on right now though let me know when you start that because i might be intrigued to do my own as well um 
part of the reason why I never thought to do my own is because what makes mine so special than everybody else's? But I was looking at it differently back then. I was looking at like, oh, right. let me make something to, let me make something to sell something, right? But yeah. at the end of no, the day, it's more that's along not what the lines of make it to learn the anatomy at this yeah. point. Um, so this is kind of that step with with the uh, the studies we're doing now. Mm-hmm. You know, in me, I've always wanted to take things a little bit more realistic, so this this all works out for me. Me too. I keep going back and forth between whether I want to go more realistic or more stylized because I feel like I'm right in the middle with the stylized realism. Let me see but... where you're at. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'd say you're right in the middle of stylized and realism for mm-hmm. sure with this leg. But that's the beauty part, though, is that once we build all these, we'll be able to kind of step them back a little bit. That's why I've subdivided. Mm -hmm. So then I can step this back and turn this into a stylized leg whenever I want. Right. Which is perfect. So. Um, But yeah, I'm so I'm always debating whether like I want to start pushing myself to more stylized or more realism because I want to go one way or the other at least for now. Like, I'd like to be able to go both ways, but I want to pick one and focus on that for a bit. Hmm. And I think I've decided on going more towards realism. Um, Join because... the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, for me personally at least, and this is another case where I think everyone's different, but I think for me personally it'll be easier for me to go too, real- or too stylized so I'd rather focus on the harder thing first. Mm, um, yeah. Like if I get if I get better at realism, it'll make doing stylized easier. I agree. Um, I'm gonna actually tweak that statement a little bit. Um, hey Ryan, welcome back. Um, I think that there is no difference between doing stylized and doing realism. It is knowing when to make the shift that makes the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, now this is also coming from a person who I have a really keen eye for capturing the likeness of the thing that I'm trying to to do. Uh, it was something I noticed early on when I was younger when I would draw things that I would see. I was very anal about making Gohan look like Gohan from Dragon Ball, the original. Not a fan art take, but he had to look like what was on the show. Um, right. And so when I started sculpting, I started developing that skill again. And my teacher, Shane, pointed that out. He was like, yeah, you you have a really good eye for that stuff. And that's good. So keep that going um, because it'll help you. And mm-hmm. I've recently done um, stylized and then switch back to realism and switch back to stylized mm-hmm. and switching back to realism. So I have enough... Uh, have enough of a portfolio to say that I could do both, which is just one of right. my goals as an artist. So I kind of made the distinction that um, when you start, for me, it's all about exaggeration and keeping things as low as possible if you want to go stylized. If you want to go realism, it's about kind of making things still look, um, still look correct and proportional with a slight hint of exaggeration but then mm-hmm. you spend more time in the texturing phase, but the build process can still be the same. You could still yeah. block things out, make it look like a leg, and then start refining afterwards. Um, and Raphael Grissetti probably... actually, when I took his course, mentioned that when he took, when if you were to take his male anatomy course and he was blocking things out, he's at one point he was like, okay, this is the point in which you decide realism or stylized. Mm-hmm. And then you can go from there. But he's like, we're going to push it more realism. So, yeah. yeah, that's my thought. I just noticed I missed a message from Citizen Mech. He said, my best type test I did was 110 words per minute, though these tests don't compare normal speech uh, because they're just random words and not sentences. There are people who type around 200 words per minute. Oh, well. Legitimately? Um, yeah, I can see that. Just a hunch I can... Uh, but I reckon the average non-blind typer write about 35 words per minute hmm. I, know. <laughs> Comics I know i used to be around like 35 and then i started playing world of warcraft and i had to learn how to type very quickly for raid settings and 
now I'm up to last time I checked, like somewhere around 90. I've never checked. I don't know. I just type. Yeah. But last when I was working in an office before the pandemic um, and I was typing out a I was told the script calls for a, um, a story written by a, a fifth grader. Here's kind of, you know, create something. And I was typing and typing and I was just typing for like 10 minutes. And then my coworker boots. That's what we called her because um, she was like this little tiny thing. She turns around and is like, Jesus, can you type any faster? And I was like, uh, I don't know. And everybody's like, yeah, nobody here types that fast. I'm like, oh, OK, great. <laughs> so I know I can type pretty fast, but I also know I do make a, a lot of mistakes. So it is not perfect typing. That is for sure. Right. Um, Atomic Studio says, I focused a lot on stylized. I took my course in Mike Theo, awesome artist, by the way. He said, everything is based in reality, but knowing that stylization is just the character. Well said. Mm -hmm. Love it. That's that's my mentality, too. Smokey's yeah. in the house. What is up, buddy? What's the current project? Current project, my friend, is leg studies today. So for you just tuning in, we started out with blocking out the base shape of the leg, refining it a little bit, putting in some muscles, subdividing and getting those muscles uh, blocked in with some good geometry, refining that geometry, merging that geometry, and now detailing that geometry. So um, for me, I'm pushing it a little bit more on the realistic side. Um, it looks like Kamara is too a little bit. Yeah, working on it. But uh, yeah, I'm also taking the opportunity for each of these projects to um, ultimately make a additional base mesh, like a new base mesh um, mm -hmm. for this. And my goal is once I have a completed male base mesh based on these studies, I will then turn around and manipulate that male base mesh into a female base mesh because then it is just uh, bone placements. And yeah. I'm just going to use the skeleton within ZBrush, which is a female skeleton, Ecroche, to define that and get that set up. So tomorrow we're going to be doing feet. And then um, we did hands yesterday. And then uh, uh, tomorrow is feet. And then Friday is uh, face. And again, not likeness. We're not doing likeness studies. We're just doing... Uh, we're just doing a face study, so going over the proportional aspects of a face. Looks nice. Thank you, man. Thank you. And that's actually a big tip I learned from Raphael Grissetti in, in that anatomy course, which was um, focus on making a male or female, but he focused on making a male uh, base mesh and then showed how to make it a female base mesh. Mm. And I was really stoked when he did that. He's like, because... He just broke down what was the difference, which isn't much. Yeah, it's not. You know? So. And so, yeah, yeah, I fully agree with Atomic's statement about knowing that stylization is just caricature. Um, yeah. And yeah, the more I thought about where I wanted to go with what style I want to focus on and things like that, um, the more I realized, you know, I've done caricatures professionally. Mm-hmm. I know how to stylize things. I know how to exaggerate things. I should learn to focus more on realism. Yeah. Yeah, you have that whole background. Mm -hmm. So you should definitely utilize that. So let's do it. <laughs> I'm so excited about the next character I have picked out, but I'm a little bit nervous about showing the concept on Twitch now because there's underboob. Oh, well, DM me. But it is a concept. I, DM me. I would love to see it, but I won't show it. <laughs> I have shown it to a couple people, but it's not fully, like, announced yet. Okay. So um, I won't say what it is. I'll just react. <laughs> but I'm curious. Are you... Is this one you're kind of nervous about because you're not quite sure how to pull it off? or? No, it's more that there's... You'll see. <laughs> okay, I'll see. Okay. Movies. She's Let not me... naked. Okay. Move my Discord over here for a second. And that way. 
Oh my god, yes, I've seen this before. Wow, that's so awesome. That's gorgeous and terrifying all at the same time. Right, and that's exactly the aesthetic I'm trying to go for. Because, um, yeah, it's beautiful. One thing that uh, Anna and I were trying to for since I'm doing the mentorship with her, was what style do I personally want to work in? Mm -hmm. And part of that was going more towards realism. Part of that right. was also like the aesthetic. And my personal aesthetic seems to be that like terrifyingly beautiful, um, like Annihilation, the movie. Huh. Um, that's my best example of what I want to go for. Cause it's like, everything is gorgeous in that movie, but it's also horrifying. Yeah. No, that's okay though. I mean, again, it's all about like picking something, right? And then kind mm -hmm. of sticking with that a little bit. Yeah. So. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I was like gathering images of just art that I am influenced by. And I kind of panicked and I went, do I, what, art, what influence? What influences me? What do you mean? Do I even like art? What is art? <laughs> um, it's kind of like if somebody asks what's your favorite movie and it's like, do I even like movies? Have I ever seen a movie? Um, yeah, I know, right? Uh, but I get I get you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I started gathering images and at first I was like, none of these have anything to do with each other. How am I going to figure out what the common thread is? And like I had paintings and I had concept art and I had characters and landscapes and comic book covers and everything. Well, do you uh, like there was like Gwenpool and uh, Zelda and various video games like uh, Subnautica and just all these different things. World of Warcraft, um, Starcraft, so many different things. Right. And finally, like I started realizing there is a common thread and even with things like Zelda, the image I picked specifically was of Link on Epona in uh, the Twilight Princess concept art. Oh, Twilight Princess is one. like the darker, grittier Zelda. I love that one. Um, and Definitely then like Subnautica, the Subnautica art I picked was specifically a really big, gorgeous uh, Leviathan. Mm -hmm. But the Leviathans in Subnautica can eat your ship. <laughs> they're they're terrifying but they're so pretty that's um, awesome Ooh, battle's ready so yeah I, I realized pretty quickly okay no there is a common thread and it's a very obvious common thread I just didn't see it at first yeah it takes a little bit of time that's because art in itself in my opinion is influenced by what we see and who we follow mm -hmm. you know um I mean, We're even just looking at my apartment, I think it's kind of obvious what my aesthetic would be. But it, it took me doing that little art hunt for me to figure out, oh, this is what I should be doing. Okay. Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and that I think that was her point. And that makes exactly. sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I I've been... I had a little, uh, I had an existential moment. I was like, I know me better now. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's one of those things that's like, um, you know, people who get into wanting to work for Disney usually grew up watching Disney or was exactly. inspired by Disney themselves and that art intrigued them. Shane Olsen mm -hmm. is one of those guys that love that kind of classic cartoon Disney look and so he ended up modeling <laughs> modeling his career <laughs> around that look. Um, and that's and that's important to note too. So Card Day and Death. There you go. Um <laughs> And so, yeah, it's the same thing. Like, I love comics, but I also love anime. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I tend to kind of dabble in between going towards that realism, since that's where comics take inspiration from. Um, and then, of course, I like the stylistic anime tone to it. So I naturally gravitate towards those two influences. And that's where... And then I learned that I can take a completely fully realistic human body, stick an anime face on it, and it works. Right. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think... Um, my Hero... Yes, My Hero March 27th is coming. 
based on all of the art that I was finding that I really like, that I want to emulate, like all that, um, I think what I want to focus on personally is getting more towards realism, but maybe not full realism. Like the sculpt might be realistic, mm -hmm. but so like I, I'm going to try to model realism, but then texturing, I'm still, I love hand painted textures. So it'll still be a little bit in the stylized realism just because of the hand painting. Mm, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, hand um, painting is cool. Do you do you follow Mike T Arts? Mike Thompson Arts? I don't remember if I do. I think so. Um look at my I know real the name. Quick. Yeah. Look uh search him real quick cuz you want there's a guy that is doing exactly what you're talking about. And awesome dude. Mike T Artworks. Mm, mm hmm really awesome dude very talented he uses um for turtle creel 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 anyway um he sculpts in zbrush and then he'll take that and he'll bring it over into a paint program and he'll actually do a paint over it but the way he does it and manipulates it um he gets really beautiful two-dimensional renders and stuff very quickly mm -hmm. um and he all and he also paints so he, he does both which is awesome nice so yeah, if you're not following him, check him out. Cause, and if you're interested in that stuff, I know you could probably hit him up and bug for like an hour of his time or something. And nice. he would probably tell you all about the painting stuff. So, hey, thank you so much for the follow, Alex. Thank you, Alex. I missed the name. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Who said so what? Susan Max said, uh, Twitch said from above in clouds shining its holy lights upon puny humans and said, let there be sensor bars. Jesus. Um, I'm guessing that has to do with the boobies. Um, yep, sounds like it. Uh, Under boob, though, I still get really? shivels from the Mosasaurus from Jurassic World. I need to watch Jurassic World again. Um, I didn't care for Jurassic World. I wasn't paying attention to it at all when I saw it, so that's why I say I need to watch it again. Um, Jimmy Fallon came on, I was out. <laughs> I just, I couldn't. See, I didn't even realize he was in it. That's how much I was paying attention to it. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I don't mind the guy. He was a little bit more of a weird trend that was happening, but eh, I don't know. I feel also, like... Smokey, um, Smokey saying, give me, give us Link, uh... I will share the concept once I start actually working on that character. <laughs> that's, that's fair. It is really cool. You won't be disappointed. It's very yeah, cool. She's badass. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do too, real fast. I'm going to zoom in on these knees. Hi, Dre. Thank you. Knees are ugly as shit. I don't care what anybody says. Knees are weird. <laughs> mm hmm. Oh, Luna, hi. Luna says, I will help. I will help you sculpt knees. Hey. Come Kitties on. Kitties are so helpful. Do I follow, follow Sculpture Geek? Yes, I do. Awesome YouTube channel. <laughs> they are a baby face. <laughs> yeah, I also follow Dr. Garuda, I think his name is. Um, also another awesome sculptor. Mm -hmm. But yes. No, I Big love following... Lizard, fear of water monsters, despite being a swim teacher, was both fascinated and terrified at the same time. Have you seen what Ian's working on on his Pixo Street? Big sea lizard. <laughs> Ooh, here, I'll, I'll pull it up, actually. Let me save this real quick. I got to do a little bit more progress on it. Uh, we're, we're getting to the point where I want to pose it. And I think there's a couple things I want to critique, but uh, ultimately, yeah, I'll pull it up. It went through a few transitions of like a super cute nest, uh, you know, super cute thing to going on pretty crazy. This is what I'm currently working on for Pixo. It's going to be a 3D um, statue. In case anyone is not watching both of us, here it is. Yeah. 
Yeah, Pixo for Pixel Logic. Yeah, Pixel Logic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm currently working on. And then I'm gonna actually start posing him really soon. I'll leave him up right now so people can see. Yeah. It's because oh. it's um <laughs> it's Celtic myth uh myth mythology and uh folklore is the theme. Two. And so many people are picking uh you know, leprechauns and stuff, so I changed mm -hmm. it. And I went with a Olifist, I think is how you pronounce it. A sea dragon. I forgot Citizen Mech, I think, followed me from uh, Verbal Processing, whose name is also Ian. Oh, nice. So he's like, Ian for, Ian from Verbal Processing or Ian from Band Underboob? Is his name even Ian? Or, oh, Ian is in IR. Yeah. So, IR uh, Skultz is Ian. <laughs> yep. Um... Band from Underboom, uh, that's Living Vertex. His name is not Ian. Mm, I, his his name yeah. is Eric. <laughs> Retweet for him to help him get his channel back. Yeah. <laughs> well, he should be back. Yeah, it's just tomorrow? a temporary. It was a three day. Yeah, it's just a temporary thing. Thankfully, but still, that's kind of annoying, isn't it? Yeah, we were in the middle of a stream, and the only reason either of us hey. had any idea that it happened was because I mentioned that he got a cat, and somebody in my chat was like, ooh, share pictures. So then he went to find a picture of the cat, and the guy in my chat was just like, um, shared a link of a screenshot of this channel has been temporarily suspended. That's crazy. Thanks, Citizen Nick. Yeah, it is pretty cute, huh? Yeah, we're going to go for a crazy anti-gravity base. So next Pixo stream, I might refine him a little bit more off Pixo stream. Um, just to kind of like clean up some things that... Because uh, I want to get more into the 3D printing aspect. Uh, which is part of my... Me being on that channel. Yeah. So, so I'll refine him a little bit more. And then get that built up. Sculptor Geek was hacked last night and his channel was deleted. Fuck, really? Ew. Uh, hey, thank you so much for the follow. That's stupid. Ugh. Yeah, Twitch tends to not care about that kind of thing, so hopefully they can. No, I think that was his YouTube. At least pretend help. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think well, that was his YouTube. Depending on how it was hacked, YouTube also doesn't care, but. No. Ugh, that sucks. Damn, I like this channel. Mm-hmm. Well, if he has if he has backups, he might be able to start a new. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a big that's a big thing that's happened a lot. Get that hip muscle going a little bit. Okay. How are you feeling with your leg? Because we got about. It's technically another hour. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling like I'm at the noodling point. <laughs> yeah, right? It's kind of where I'm feeling. I got the main base. I, I dialed back the muscularity of it. Um, mm -hmm. And when you do that, there's not a whole lot of detail in, the, in somebody's leg. Right. But, yeah. And I am going for female bodybuilder, but, I mean, it's so dialed back compared to a man that there's just not much detail to add. Just put her on TRT. You'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone has to get a at Team YouTube's attention and get it back. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Consider that done. Yeah. Yeah. I think YouTube will hold on to your account for a little while before deleting it indefinitely. Don't know who said that, though. Um... I don't remember the name of the YouTuber, but there was a female, like, I don't, I don't even know what kind of video she makes. If she's just a vlogger, I'm honestly not sure, but she had a pretty big following and then her account got hacked and they, the hacker deleted all of her videos and started posting their own whatever it was. 
on it. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. And it took so long for YouTube to care that they couldn't do anything to help her. What? My daughter better not yep. be touching food. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's crap. That's really crap. <laughs> Girl just tried to steal our leftovers. <laughs> Mm. Hardy, I love that you call her the girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just angled my leg out a little bit because just like what I did with the arm the other day, if I'm going to be using this as a base mesh, I want it to be more in A pose, meaning I need the arms and legs to be out further. Mm, yeah. Um, as you said that, I was actually just contemplating um, straightening the leg out, as in if he's standing. So, very very similar. Hmm. Yeah. Well, this is yeah. Citizen Mac. They uh, they did not delete the account. They deleted the videos because they wanted to use the account. They wanted the followers. That's so stupid. Mm hmm. That's so stupid. Once it a model took is her. Free... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. She, oh, she had to contact uh, Philip DeFranco to have him contact his people at YouTube before they would finally pay any attention. That's so stupid. Um, once a model is created, how hard is it to rig it to be animation ready? Um, I'm not a rigger, so I can't answer specifics. But what I can say is that once you have an, uh, a model. So once a model is created, you need to prep it for animation. So you need to manually mm -hmm. retopologize the model. And depending on the complexity of the model depends on how long it takes. Yep. I have done retopology that has taken 30 hours in total with really complex parts, welding, getting all that stuff done. Once it's retopologized correctly, then it can be sent over to rig department. So it just depends on the project and depends on how it's going to be animated it also depends on if it's going to be for a game or uh, a movie or what kind of game um yeah they specifically said it's... animation so i was thinking film yeah uh, but yeah i mean go ahead characters You're... still get animated but um yeah i'm not a rigger either but i have done some really basic rigging and it's not easy <laughs> yeah um you want to know who the other voice is, by the way? That is the multi-stream. Her name is Kamara. Oh. She's a game artist. Go ahead, continue. Oh, I was just going to say, it's, it's not easy. Um, I'm bad at it. I don't like doing it. It's very technical. If I could never have to rig a character again, aside from just basic posing, I would be very happy. Well, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't I don't rig. Um, I do statue work, so I pose everything to be in its final form. So, yeah. Weight painting. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, how long it takes is always dependent on the project. There's not a there's not a simple answer for that as far as time goes. It takes as long as it takes. Oh, Ryan does rigging. Yeah, it's a whole other discipline. It really is. It really yeah. is. It's a very different discipline, different skill set. It's one that I'm very bad at and don't have a lot of interest in getting better at. Um, anybody that can do it, I have a lot of respect for. Yep. Our, our good friend Peter does uh, oh, yeah. rigging and animation. Well, he sets up for animation. He does animation, but he has to rig his own stuff. Let me clarify that. sudden friend visiting miss luna for disney latest movie there were like 20 names listed for the rig department oh yeah 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 and that's a big studio yeah so yeah i've been using rigging for posing figurines oh and how's that working for you atomic I, I just didn't want to learn the skill set to do it i just figured you know cutting up my model because you got to rebuild anyway at least the way I've been posing. So um, even using Mixamo, I've tried. I've had to just rebuild the models. 
So I just figure if I gotta rebuild it, then I might as well get to a point where I'm happy to pose and fix and then just sculpt asymmetrically. And I learned how mm -hmm. to sculpt asymmetrically so I didn't have to rig. <laughs> you cheat and use Blender add-on after Topo? Yeah, that's not cheating. <laughs> that's smart. <laughs> um, yeah, retopology even... When I learned retopology, the average game character... The average AAA game character was somewhere around like 16 to 20,000 polys. Okay. Um, the average, like, for an MMO or something like that, it was more like five or 6,000 polys. Um, now we're up to MMO-type characters can be as high as 30,000. And a AAA game character in the current console gen can get up to, like, 100,000. Wow. So as technology improves, retopology gets more and more complicated. Right. And yep. that's why I'm not very good at it right now. I need to, I need a lot of practice with my retopology. I know, like, I understand how edge loops should work. I understand clean topology. I don't fully understand how much resolution to put in certain areas because I haven't had to go this high res before. Um, it's crazy. That makes sense. Ryan wishes he could stream like us and have a lot of respect. Thanks, dude. I really appreciate that. It's fun. I'm here for the social aspect. I love it. Yeah, same here. Um, also, apparently Luna is also here for the social aspect. She has decided <laughs> to take over my stream for the moment. Yep. I just love hanging out with everybody and mm -hmm. being able to do what I love as a job. It's fun. Even though it's a bit of a struggle, it is fun. It's going all right. I generally make the base mesh. Then because most clothing comes off the body, I kind of just use the base as a way to make the clothing. The cloth. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, means the topology is already decent for deformation. Ooh, that's that's a great approach. Mm -hmm. That said, it is because most of the work is... is Biped? Bipped? What is, what is bip? B-I-P-E-D? I don't know that word. Oh, biped? Biped. Jesus. <laughs> and you I was saw like, your what word are you guy. looking at? I wasn't looking at the right message. <laughs> bipedal. Bipedal. Yep. Yeah. Bipedal. <laughs> yes. You'll learn real quickly. I spoke very badly. Um, <laughs> Kratos from God of War 2018's cutscene model must have been one of the highest polygons count ever. Yeah, it was pretty well, intense. Although you'd be surprised what you can project. With, there is a difference with cutscene characters too. That's usually standard animation because that's not... Um, that's not real time. That's cutscenes are basically a little movie. Yeah. Um, it, so if it's gameplay, that's real time, and they need to render the, the the game engine needs to render the character doing whatever you tell it to do. But cutscenes, they can have it all pre-planned out. It's all rendered. They can do it just like you would an animated feature film. Exactly. Okay. So real quick before we continue chit chatting. Um, I'm pretty much happy where where this is at. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to go ahead and call my leg done and start yeah, working okay. a little bit on my dragon real quick just to kind of go over some stuff, fix some stuff. But um, yeah, I think yeah. I'm going to switch to doing some beetle retopo because I think my leg is also done. But yeah, I'm pretty um, happy with this. I think it looks very much like the leg I was going for. Hopefully... This was helpful for you guys, but before we just switch, I was wondering if anybody had any anatomy questions in general uh, <clears throat> that they wanted to touch on while the model's up. I can also leave the model up. It's like a screen, t screen grab, but I did want to quickly grab a shot. I just noticed uh, Ryan said game characters. There's a lot of magic happening. They don't have to have nearly the poly counts movies do yep normal maps uh displacement maps all that make it look high res when it's really not yeah hold on a second atomic studios i'm out for i'm out to eat dinner hopefully i have the energy to jump back on afterwards well uh atomic we're only going to uh for the next hour so mm -hmm. it was great having you here thanks for the lurk but um you know enjoy your dinner enjoy your evening <laughs> you know 
um, it was it's always great having you here, buddy. So uh, if I don't see you back. before you get back, have a good one. Thank but. you. I have to I have to take my arm back from my kitty. <laughs> take that arm back. She's All like, right. no, I, it's my pillow. So this is where I'm currently at, and I'm going to be changing some stuff right now. There's also some broken topology here, so I'm going to want to fix that. Thanks, man. Great stream, both of you. Yeah, thank you, dude. Thank you. All right. So I have all this You're beautiful even... scales. And I'm going to show you guys a trick real quick. If you guys want to quickly, do you guys have a bunch of um, poly counts or, or poly groups within ZBrush and you want to get rid of, let's say, half of it, but you don't want to select each and every one? Just mask, just select lasso up to the one that you want to keep. And then go ahead and negative subtract, then hit control shift A and it brings that last one that you want to keep back and has the other ones hidden. And now I can just delete those. <clears throat> Pardon me, hold on. My throat decided to scream at me. I need a citizen mech over there to keep you hydrated. <laughs> yeah, that one's a fun one, Ryan. I really enjoy that one. So that's that's how you can do it. So yeah, and once you get it, you just go ahead and delete hidden. And now you're now you have what you have and the rest is easy enough to do. Now what I'm going to do is actually kind of pose him. So let's go to Z plugin, speaking of posing, and I'm going to go to transpose master. And I guess I can get rid of my leg anatomy. So let's uh, save that. Citizen Mac checking what time my next hydration is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I usually have water or something next to me, but I had a massive protein shake for breakfast and I have mm. the coffee. And so my dumbass just, you know, <laughs> kept it where it was at. All right. I have right now I have bottled water and my empty monster can. Because I self-medicate my ADHD with monsters. <laughs> Joe do it said ask an animator to animate an epic fight scene with complex choreography and a rapid moving camera and they don't bat an eye ask an animator to animate a character putting on pajamas and getting into bed and their head will explode from having to deal with too much squat <laughs> yeah yep <laughs> that's awesome and hilariously accurate yep Oh, another cool thing, guys. You know how, like, sometimes I'll show you how to, like, mask something off and control tap, tap, tap? If you guys want a really soft mask, zoom way out into, like, the oblivion and then mask the section that you want. That'll actually provide a very soft mask. You can still I soften it further, then, but it's really cool that you could just kind of back out pretty far. And the further you go, the more... The, the softer it is. So you don't always have to tap, tap, tap a bunch. Just pretty awesome. Okay. I'm gonna be breaking the crap out of this, I guarantee it. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I'm now in my uh, my own little uh, opposing world. All right, oh, I'm in Retapo world, which is usually me just thinking about anything but what I'm retapologizing. Right. 
Tell me about the, this anti-gravity pose you were thinking. Always something new to learn here. Hell yeah, anything to help out. All right, so the anti-gravity pose that I'm thinking about doing, Ryan, is, well, we'll just kind of set the example. He's gonna be arced and kind of arching up this way like he's swimming, <clears throat> but his belly is gonna be maybe colliding with, uh, with some atmosphere. That's the idea. So I'm gonna be setting up for, um, I'm actually gonna be setting up for, uh, um, Oh my god, if I find words. Uh, setting up for the, uh, for the, the, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what are words? <laughs> uh, setting up that he'll be sitting on the, at an angle on the actual, like, cave or something like that. Uh, wow, that was very difficult. Please don't clip that. <laughs> <laughs> now everyone's like, oh, clip it, clip it right now. Clip it. Speaking is hard, respecting but you can do it. <laughs> yeah, welcome to my world. I agree. Yeah. Can I? I don't know if I can copy paste. I need some water, one second. And entertaining in the kitchen. Have I seen tensy gritty models in the pose you had before? Might work for that one. Um, so be art. Send me send me a link. I would love to see exactly what you're talking about. I wonder if the rise in AI and animation will let program automatically rig your model oh my god i i think we might get to a point where that's where that would happen i think that's mm -hmm. a little bit ways down the down the line um because you can you can save out a rig once you build a rig let's say for human characters i know you can save that rig out and then you can apply that to multiple characters yeah um, the the only real difference between one character to the next is skin waiting skin waiting yeah Exactly. That's my understanding anyway. I'm not a rigger. <laughs> oh, this. Um I have seen this. I wouldn't know how to actually apply this. I guess I would have to learn how to build this and what's its Hmm. Hmm. You got me thinking. <laughs> Mix them up kind of does that already, but it can get kind of janky. Exactly, yeah. It can get very janky. Yeah, because they're, yeah, they're not controlling the... Go ahead. I was, I was going to say, uh, everybody's always trying to figure out how to automate the more tedious parts of the job that the artists don't like doing. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to scale this down. Well, at the, at the end of the day, I think it really boils down to, you know, what makes it easy, what makes it easier to get the job done? You know, how fast can you, can you do yeah, it? Yeah, a lot of it's about money and efficiency too. Exactly. That kind of, it's kind of weird there for a second. See, like, but I'm gonna have to repose, rebuild this guy anyway, so. Why? I don't know. Yeah. Why? All right, I think that was Stream Raiders I heard. So we're gonna start bending my, my little fish guy. I need to also bend them. Something like this. Excuse me. Bless you. Allergies. Oh, 
allergy season. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Really soften that up. Yep. Okay. This is why we keep everything low. So, yeah. Now it's about building the rest of the scene itself, too. Take this guy. Kind of do this here. Uh, some people really love rigging. Oh yeah, no, yeah. that's oh, true. Yeah. It's a four-point suspension. I know a couple. Of those. Have you built one of those um, models, Ryan? No, I, I mean that's why rigging exists because there are people who do get it. Just like there are people who love to code, who love to create. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't do it. Right. But, it takes uh, all types. Yeah, exactly. Looks kind of cool like that. Whee! Okay. So I'm thinking of kind of having an S curve shape here. So then, and then have him balanced here like he's kind of hit something. So take this whole thing, set this in the middle, set this up, bring him here. So what I'm thinking is this is the main kind of pose. Let's put him here in the in the middle of the world. Maybe turn him around this way a little bit. Gonna have to fix his body real quick, but the idea of it. Oh yeah, I forgot to... Forgot to bring this part with him. So we'll have to kind of fix that a little bit. There we go. Set that there, send them over in the real world space. Uh, there are some people who can really, who are really into uh, fluid simulation, and it seems like Disney employee, employees, most of them. I agree with that. Right. Sentence. Look at every movie that's come out in the last. I feel like there's a, a water simulation every year or two that just is crazy. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, cool. I used to want to be an Imagineer, and then I realized I didn't want to be an engineer, and that kind of <laughs> defeats that. <laughs> okay, Ryan says he can explain how to build one of those models he showed, but he's limited to 200 characters on YouTube, so it might take a couple. Um, you don't have to do it here if you don't want to, Ryan. Feel free to do so. We won't change topics on you. <laughs> <laughs> Try but, not to. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm always curious on that. I don't know if it would work. I, I, yeah, what I'm curious on is the weight too. Like, I wonder how that would work, but we'll find out. Okay, so I'm thinking something like this for now. We're gonna have to fix it. So let's send it back. So let's go ahead and say T-Pose, send it back. And then I'm gonna start building the base so people can at least see what's going on. And then we then we start fixing the rest of it. So everything that I see here, of course, I'm going to go ahead and actually group. So here's a really fun trick for anybody who wants to know. If you want to stick every sub tool you have into a folder, but you do not want to sit here and drag one thing into another into another uh, by creating a single folder, open up your uh, open up your gizmo and then make sure your pizza boxes are selected. Once your pizza boxes are selected, go ahead and hit Control F, and it's gonna ask you, all visible subtools will be thrown into a folder. Are you sure you're ready for that? And you say, yeah, I'm ready for that. And then type in what it is, C Dragon. Everything is now, anything that was visible 
is now into the folder. So now I can turn that off and we're done. This way, what we could do, it's like go ahead and insert a sphere, drop that down, put this in a folder and call this base. And now I've just organized my entire setup with no problems. And then I can go ahead and go to my folder to save it and save that out as a new subtool. And we are good to go. Okay. Mm, if you hold him in a C tail above head there, you will hang him by his head. And there would be other cables pulling the tail to keep it upright. Okay, that didn't take as much as I thought. <laughs> okay, cool. I might, I might try that. I might try, sit, let me see if I could build one of those things first and then go from there. But I like it. I'm intrigued. You guys have inspired me, so I'm <laughs> noting this down for sure. What we are going to do real quick is come here and we're going to type in C caves. What is a sea cave? Oh, I didn't actually know that was a real term. I just was like, sea and caves and... Okay, maybe I should type in like... Awesome. Um, underwater caves. Let's try that. Kind of get some environments going on in here. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. I'll draw it and post it and send it in this part. Awesome, that would be awesome. Oh, is that a is that a phobia? Are you triggered? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Here, let me move that off stream. <laughs> My bad. Is it the uh uh it's the fear it's of the, the ocean. Lasophobia. Yeah, fear of deep sea. Yeah. I have that, but not with... <laughs> it's a joke, <laughs> Matt Trevor. Okay. Well. Yeah, I was going to say, I have that, but definitely not with, like, sea caves. Because sea caves are pretty. But, sea like, caves are pretty. Super deep ocean where you can't see everything. It's like, huh? Ah! That's funny. Um, yeah, I but get that's that. that's why I love Pomodica. Pomodica is spooky. Awesome. See, some people call that a phobia. I just call that fear. Like... Right. You know, if I, the ocean's pretty and I'm like, yeah, ocean's good, ocean's pretty, blah, blah, blah. You stick me in the middle of the ocean and surround me with any creature and, you know, make it seem like I'm not going to live. Uh, I'm going to be scared shitless. <laughs> Especially if it's like something that you know is there, but you can't see it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. What's going on there? Huh. So I'm going to go ahead and put this here. What's up, son? Yeah, that's fine. All right. I was thinking about maybe making a boat or something to, um, for the base itself. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I thought that'd be kind of neat. getting some funky shapes happening. There we go. Uh, when you're swimming along and you see <laughs> the bottom and there are four feet ahead of you, it just fades to black. It's pretty spooky. Yeah, little oddity games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like it'd be terrifying and I'd probably crap myself. <laughs> Actually, model a boat like it ain't nothing. Yep, we will be doing that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I've kind of like kind of cut some shapes that I want with this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and actually Z remesh it. So hopefully, it kind of gives me a little bit more shape, which is nice. 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and insert a cylinder and we're gonna go ahead and delete loops I believe there we go yep geometry edge loop delete loops so what I can do is actually bring this down scale this down I'm thinking about like if I want something else down here, I definitely want something down here at the base. So we're gonna kind of offset the space a little bit. So what we're really paying attention to right now is the weight of the thing. And if I offset the space, kind of rotate this like this, have that right there. Now what we can do, <laughs> let's go ahead and save this as number four. Now I'm going to try to push this a little bit more. Let's go back to T-Pose Mesh. <clears throat> take this guy. Take, take that guy. Mask that off. Send this here. I'm going to angle it some more. Please, sir. I want some more. <laughs> Line always makes me think of Pink Floyd. Right? There we go. Yeah. Push, really push that. By the way, if anybody is curious about retopology and building the low res for a game model, that's what I'm up to right now. Um, it's a lot of just nudging. Uh, <laughs> vertices around drawing squares and nudging points yeah, yeah, yeah sent it see if that helps awesome yeah you guys got to check out Tamara uh, if you hadn't maybe dual streaming all week you could check us post out right here yeah. Loop. you guys also have to go follow her because she's awesome <laughs> And vice versa, if there's anybody in my chat who hasn't followed IR Sculpts. My Streamlabs has been posting the link periodically, but let me post it again just in case. Oh, Ryan, this is so helpful, dude. Okay, great. That's really cool. I may have to play with doing a few oh, more of yeah. these. Not just, you know, yeah. I think what I might do is design my own and 3D print it to get the feel of it before I apply it to something like this. Yes, that's how my brain works. I have to see it in its simplest form for me to even step up. But this is so clear and concise, so... Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that, dude. Nice. You need three points at least to the tail. Okay, cool. That makes total sense, dude. Okay. Yep, perfect. Alright, so this is what I'm thinking about on the pose. And this is where we get that kind of anti-gravity feel. And I'll tell you right now, like, this is where that pin is going to be. Like, I'm going to put that key right in there. But this way you get the sense of, like... We might even angle him a little lower. Might really, like, really push it. Push it real good. <laughs> kind of like where that's at, though. Yeah, okay. We'll stick with that for now. I think that's going to be fun. Okay, let's go ahead and send it back. Great idea, yeah. What is you had boats and discuss the cable and fishing line? Oh, yeah. We're making tense gritty, tense gritty structures. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. It helps if your anchor points have some adjustability. So you can make sure the lines are taunt. Ah, that makes sense. 
What if I'm making mistakes? I've been programming all night. <laughs> it's possible. You've also been typing a uh, hundred miles an hour, so you know. All right. So, the key to statues in general is they all need to look appealing from every angle as much as possible. So, being able to see his face at this point, and at this point, and at this point, and here seeing the the action line. That's that's really like the key elements to to really getting a good solid pose. Now we sculpt asymmetrically, so let's go ahead and save this. I'm gonna save this as five. Since Charter came in and shut my internet off yesterday, um, my internet has been awesome today. Nice. <laughs> That's one uh, kind of upside and downside of where I live right now. Uh -huh. They renovated the building not too long before I moved in. So I'm the first person to ever live in this unit in its current state. Um, but when they renovated, I think they forgot to set the building up to be able to have different internet for each unit. Oh, okay. So... Yeah, they, the building provides internet, and I'm pretty sure that was them going, oh, we made a boo-boo. <laughs> we need to <laughs> fix this. Um, no. But the internet that they provide is uh, Fios. Oh, okay. Wow, Fios is pretty good, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember when Fios was becoming big in uh, California. Um, it got rejected outright in some areas, including Los yeah. Angeles. But um, a lot of uh, a lot of the business side of town got got the, the proper cables, and mm -hmm. like there's a Google there's like a there's like a Google dark fiber that runs in California for big businesses, yeah. which I find to be hilarious. There's um in so I lived in uh, Vallejo up in the Bay Area for a couple of years, and. Right around the time that Google was trying to get their fiber optic network all laid out in California, uh -huh. um, Vallejo was trying to petition to get their city, uh, like the whole city would have Fios that's just like free public Wi-Fi throughout the whole city. Hmm, okay. And I don't know if that ended up ever happening, but it sounded like it was pretty close when I left. Wow. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, Ryan needed to. Oh, hold on. I, I don't want to miss a question. Um, what's the most work you've lost due to a program crash? Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> who's triggered now? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say the most amount of work I've ever lost was in percentage 50% of a starting character because I forgot to save it when I started it. I had blocked out a full character for a commission. Started from a base mesh, luckily, but I blocked out a whole character, got all the clothing, got everything going on, and then it crashed. Um, there's a fortunate side to the story, an unfortunate side. I did lose 50% of the work that I had done up to that point, um, but, I was able to recover some of the uh, project because it was corrupted. So I was able to go in and sneakily export out an FBX file that kind of recovered some of it. But at the end of the day, I just decided to redo everything. But mm. yeah, I lost a good chunk of work. Um, I've lost... So at one point I lost the majority of a model and it wasn't because I hadn't saved. It was because uh, when Maya crashed, it corrupted my whole file. Fucking Maya. And yeah, <laughs> um, no, I, I hate Maya. Um, I use it because it's what I know. Yep. But okay. Um, yeah, so I lost a whole model because it got corrupted and yeah it was just like a random regular Maya crash that it's like oh send the crash report to Autodesk blah 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 and when I reloaded it 
my file would no longer load. Yeah. So mm. I, since then, I always save in instances. Um, anytime I get to a point that I know, like, this is a checkpoint, if you want to put it in game terms. Um, I know that I'm never going to want to go back to anything before this. I'm going to save a new instance. Right. That makes sense. Control. So it's like version control. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's like version control for coding, except I do it manually. Yeah. Um, Ryan said, let me retype this. Uh, if you had boats such as on the surface of the water and disguising the support cables as fishing lines, they don't, uh, mm. they don't even have to use actual cables. You can model them. That's sick, dude. Dude, your head is all over the place and I love it. <laughs> I love Frank's like ideas. Idea. He has right. a lot of really cool ideas. Yeah. You didn't lose anything, you gained extra practice. Oh, uh, man. Exactly. Yeah, you know how to talk to me. <laughs> I've had Maya do that a few times. You can work all day, save multiple versions, and not even know you're wasting your time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not... Um... Yeah. Yeah. It just sucks. I mean, there's nothing else to say to that. It just sucks. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Living Vertex and I have a thing that... So, when we were in school, we were always told that if something goes wrong with ZBrush, you yell at Paul Gabry, so everyone would just randomly be like, Paul Gabry! <laughs> um, but That's one way to do we it. We never had issues with ZBrush. We always had issues with Maya. So we're like, who do we yell at? Um, so just recently on our streams, we've started yelling at Mike, who is just the random name we came up with for the Autodesk employee. <laughs> so oh, it's like if, if Maya does something stupid, we're like, Mike! <laughs> oh, that's funny. Poor Mike, though. Eh, he didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> you could just yell Autodesk. Yeah. But Mike is funny. We had been. We had just been yelling Autodesk, but then somehow Mike happened. Yep. Yes, Nichols, I am working on the drag. Yeah, we finished the leg. Uh, check out my legs. Check out my legs, girl. <laughs> <laughs> As Chevy said earlier, take a look at that gam. Yeah. Here's, here's my uh, legs as they are. But yeah, I got to a point where I'm happy with it, especially since I'm going to be using these as a base mesh. I think Kamara and I are on the same page with that one. Mm -hmm. Why put all this work together on the anatomy study if we can't even use it? So, exactly. um, so this is where we got and pretty happy with it. And now I'm kind of sneak peeking uh, on the dragon for peeps so they can see it. Oh, I got a hydrate. Thank you, Citizen Mech. Yeah. He says, I, I imagine that one random employee at Maya whose name Mike is now terrified because everyone keeps yelling his name. <laughs> well, I did have someone, um, I think it's MJ Sculpts, who was like, hey, can you uh, not use that name? Maybe Matt? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Hey, damn, looks like SpongeBob's legs, right? It does. <laughs> that gif I sent you this morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I showed Snickles. It was funny. <laughs> Uh, okay, so support the cable to the head, and if the harpoon from, and if it was a harpoon from the boat, the mythical hunt. Ooh, I love the layout of this guy. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, this is coming along well. I just wanted to progress it a little further because I definitely think um, it's gonna move the the stream along. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited about so that. So many people asking so many good questions on those streams. So many questions, and I love it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I'm also, with this cave that I'm doing, I'm establishing the weight of the uh, of the base, of the, or of the piece, so that it doesn't tip over. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do on Sunday when I stream um, on the Pixo is that uh, I'll explain everything that I did today. So that way they kind of get caught up, but I can move the project along so that 
you know, we're not spending all day just blocking out stuff. Okay. Yes, yeah, I'm taking really some cool. screenshots yeah, of my topology so I can send them to Anna as I go. Nice. I'm really happy you're taking uh, Anna's class. Is it Anna? Do you say Anna or Anna? It's, I, it's Anna. I keep going back and forth. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Anna. Um, mm -hmm. But I think she said people in the US call her Anna and then people in Brazil call her uh, Carol. Oh, interesting. I only ask because um, it's going to sound really weird, but um, uh, so Anna Ferris, the actress, mm -hmm. um, I used to call her Anna Ferris until she had a podcast and then she would be like, this is Anna Ferris, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wait, what? And then I realized how she spelled it. She spelled it with two N's, A-N-N-A. Mm -hmm. So like it was an, it was an exaggeration, but um but I wasn't sure because um Anna Caroline she she spells it with one n but it's yeah. also it's also a cultural thing too right because she's mm -hmm. she's a, um she's Spanish I can't remember uh Brazilian, or no I think. Brazilian yeah so so I was wondering how you said it maybe I should, maybe I should just ask I... you <laughs> yeah, I, I need to double check with her because I've been saying it on my stream and I'm like, I don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> right. Especially since she's also a streamer. And yeah. Yeah. Streamer and super talented artist. Mm hmm. Yeah. She's been making a Kelpie. Yeah, she has. Oh, I've been watching it too. It's great. Yeah. What do we got? We only got like a few more minutes. Kitty, I heard that. Hi, Brandy. Meow. She says, I heard a few more minutes. I need to come say hi one more time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, I'm popular today. My messages on everything is blowing up. That's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, but then there are people that just pronounce their names oddly to sound sophisticated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've said this before, and actually, I don't. I haven't found. I haven't found this to be inaccurate, and I say this with no judgment. But if you ever meet an Ian that pronounces his name Ian, mm. I find that people who pronounce their names Ian are kind of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's like everyone I've ever known <laughs> with the name uh, Steve or Steven. If they go by Steven, it's the same. It, like they're kind of. Not yeah. my favorite people. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. So, I've known Steve an is Ian. Fine. Steven is not. Yeah, I've known an Ian, and he was a, he was proudly a bit of a dick. Um, but then I also like uh, there is um, well, okay, shit. What was the name of that show? There's a show I watched. Oh, what was it on? Damn it! Oh, now I can't remember it, so it's irrelevant. But. Um, Anyway, the guy's name was Ian, and then he explains why he was saying Ian, and it was to to the point. <laughs> so I thought I it was pretty funny. Guy, I knew a guy named Ihan, but it was spelled A Y H A A N or something, and he was from. I don't want to guess what country because I can't remember, but somewhere in Eastern Europe. Yeah. So, his name was Ion. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Doesn't even look like Ian. Nope. I remember uh, even even though Ian is pretty popular these days as far as names go, I've seen a lot of them. Um, it is interesting. Oh, hey, I just got a raid from Gabe Matthews. Thanks for the raid. Hey. Welcome in. Um, when I when I was growing up, Ian wasn't as popular mm. of a name. So, and then I learned that Ian meant John. Like it translates to John. Interesting. Uh, in Scottish, because it's a it's a Scottish name. So in Scotland, it, yeah, uh, which I thought was interesting. So um, anyway, uh, so when I had it, there was a point where I would say my name is Ian, and they look at you weird. Even to this day, sometimes I'll go in 
Like, I bought something yesterday at Yoshinoya, and he was like, what's your name? I'm like, Ian. He's like, Ian? No, Ian. <laughs> Ian. So I used to say, I used if I didn't want to deal with, or if I thought, oh, this person's not going to be able to pronounce my name, I would just right. be like, John. Just an easy getaway. Just John. <laughs> um, so thanks for the follows. Let's see, I got Captain Sun, Captain Sun Pie. Um, and Ben Monster TV. Also, nice. to anybody who has not been in here before, I'm Kimara. I am working on the beetle that I was just showing. Um, right now I'm in the middle of retopologizing him. These are his elbows that I just finished. And I'm about to load in another uh, reference mesh. This program is called Topo Gun. It's my first time using it. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, how are you liking that? It's growing on me. There were certain things about it that I just feel... Mythic Quest. Sorry. It's sort of... It's like almost missing, but... Yeah. Get it. Um, the, the show I was talking about, Mythic Quest. Yes. <laughs> that is... Thanks, Nichols. Yeah, that, that was the, the show. And his okay, name is... I passed, I passed the vibe check. Apparently it is, in fact, Captain Sunpai. Hooray! <laughs> Yay! Hi, Brandy. <laughs> like my last name so again? frequently, it's pronounced Mick, Mick Ali, but it's Mac Ali. Oh, okay. See, I would have never got that because, yeah, in the US, we say Mick for MC, mm -hmm. not Mac. But how it's typed is it is pronounced the first way, but it's technically supposed to have two underlines under the C. Oh, okay. Gotcha. By the way, um, since my stream bot has not posted this again since you guys came in, I'm multi-streaming with IR Sculpts right now, so there's yeah. our multi-stream link. Um, we were doing Anatomy Week. We were both sculpting legs, and let me pull mine up so I can show you mine. I'll pull um, mine up too so people can see it. They pop on so over. Monday was arm day, Tuesday was hands, today is legs, Tomorrow is feet. Here's my leg. Legs. It's a lady leg. Relatively muscular female leg, but it's a leg. Um, and we finished them a little bit faster than we finished the other ones that we've done so far this week. So we've both moved on to, he's working on his, I don't remember how to pronounce the name of the sea creature. Oh, um, it is the Celtic sea creature. Olifist. Olifist. Um, and then I'm working on the retopology for my beetle. And also, Citizen Mech, I thank you for joining us again. Have a good day. Uh, have a good game session. Yes, go have a good game <laughs> session, time. Citizen Mech. Yeah, we got about. I have about ten minutes, and then I got to get to work on my likeness for the hair. Mm. I should just look in the mirror since I have such flowing locks today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to reach apologize the eye. That's just a sphere. Yeah. Uh, I want to get to the fingers already. <laughs> Brian says there isn't a way to type it correctly, so most people call me Rymac. Nickname given to me. I didn't pick it. Actually, that's a really great nickname. I was wondering how you stumbled across that. Because that's what you use now for your your Twitch side, right? that makes sense now the way it's pronounced versus how it's spelled that totally makes sense okay. so this is Brie. yep she periodically comes to say hi <laughs> yeah yeah that's really cool <clears throat> I need to kind of correct some of the some of these right here. Kind of scale that down a little bit, and then do this last one. Hmm. 
somewhere. Right there. Bloop. I realize the sound effects I'm going to be making in my streams are bloop. <laughs> <laughs> we do something cool. Bloop. There we go. Done. Donezo. So another, another streamer I was watching yesterday. Uh, he was. He just finished working on a drone. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess he's been calling it Zoom Zoom. <laughs> Uh, he's working cool. on a submarine, so he's saying he went from uh, zoom zoom to blue, uh, zoom zoom to blub blub. <laughs> That's perfect. Stickle Prince is my given nickname since middle school. Yeah, it's stuck, stuck with you. Oh, you guys are making me feel so special today. Heck yeah, dude. You're a special dude, man. Love hanging out with you. We just say it as it is, man. I love a good bloop. Is that pretty important? Yep. Actually, that was funny because um, uh, that's what Paul Gabriel always says. <laughs> guys are going to stream. You got to have the fix. People love the sound effects. Bloop. That's what I don't know. <laughs> I, I'd say it's true. I'd say people want the sound effects. Okay. Kind of get this nice flow going here. What's cool about this little Olifest creature I've been sculpting is that um, I've kind of just made it my own. You know, mm. took the idea of what this creature was supposed to be. And then really just like laid in on it and just kind of took it to whatever I thought was inspiring. So it's kind of my first like concept idea from just pure sculpting and just building mm -hmm. resources. So it's been very intriguing to say the least. What's going on? That doesn't look like a leg. <laughs> it's because we finished it, Ninar. We finished it. Ninar! I called my truck Wub Wub because it had a hole in the muffler. It used oh, to no. make that low Wub 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 They're already done. Get faster each day. I gotta sculpt my real legs in a couple hours. <laughs> That's it. It's amazing. It's a perfect. It's perfect, right? It's the best, best name you could have for your truck. All right. Hell yeah. Okay. So for this body, I find that sometimes um, things can get really warbly and really funky when um, you pose. And you don't uh, Z remesh or anything. So what I'm gonna do is actually turn everything off, duplicate just this this body the way it is. Hit solo. I'm gonna go ahead and delete lower. I'm gonna Z remesh it now. It's a real leg day for you then, isn't it? It is. Yep. Absolutely, man. I'm really excited. I love working out. It's also kind of helped my men my mental capacity, especially during the these relatively tough times. Yeah. Okay, that's a really good load topology. I love that. Okay. I should play Heat Saber. Then it'll be my leg day too. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and. What I'm gonna do is actually project the details that are on here and then I'm actually gonna kind of step it back a little bit so let's go to Z remesher no I'm sorry not Z remesher sub tool project project all after subdividing a few times say yep there we go now I can step down and have a little bit more control. 
come back to this guy. Delete this. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, if you guys hear me typing and like random Windows notifications and such, it's because I'm taking screenshots of what I've uh, retopologized so far because I don't want to forget. I need nice. to send them to Anna. <laughs> send it to Anna, Anna. It's probably Anna. <laughs> well, next time you're there, you gotta ask. Yeah. That's, that's your job now. <laughs> I'll report back. Be like, out of curiosity, not for any particular reason, check out my stream. Um... <laughs> Time to clean this bastard up. Get some decent flame change happening. I'm also gonna turn off back face mask, which is your best friend. You need to pinch something. This dragon isn't green, so I get to pinch him. <laughs> Really poor joke. <laughs> so I'm glad you laughed. Thank you. <laughs> My kitties are lucky. They both have green eyes. And unlike your son, I agree that green eyes counts. Yay! I'll let, I'll make sure he knows that. <laughs> I don't know. If comes up. Up. <laughs> but he was saying the same thing last night. He said he doesn't have to worry about wearing green because he has green eyes. Yeah. See that? That sounds like something someone with green eyes would say. <laughs> And I agree. That's what we got. You bought it for fifteen hundred bucks and got me from Nebraska to Florida, then it died. Oh, the uh, the truck. Sorry, I was like, what did we buy from fifteen hundred? His wubba. There we go. Well, rest in peace, wubba. like these little nubs down here. I don't want Twitch to mistake them for nipples. <laughs> no booby ban. Yeah, no booby ban on my little dragon. Alright, so tomorrow, for those of you who uh, want to join us for anatomy, is feet. And feet are awesome. We're going to be sculpting feet, and then Friday will be um, face, and then I'd say Tuesday next week, if you're down, Kamara, um, do torso and back. We'll just do the whole thing, because four hours is plenty of time to get a good torso built, in my opinion. Yeah. So... That way we can focus on getting uh, the back muscles and also the uh, obliques and abs and uh, pectoral muscles built in. And if there's time after which, then we'll uh, kind of build our own base meshes after we have all that. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. You a green? I'm a green. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can't wait to start texturing this this beast. Yeah, this is fun. I like this pose. I'll have to think of something to put down here. Okay.
All right, that's gonna be it for me. Drink matcha this morning, so that was my green for the day. There you go, and you're digesting it. All right, everybody, thank you guys for stopping by, hanging out. Um, we do have a battle to start real quick. Totally forgot about it, and and then we're gonna go, which is always fun. And I, unlike the past two days, will not be back on later today because Wednesdays are my day off from my regular streams. But there you go. I'll be going again all day tomorrow. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. I had the most stable internet today, so uh, thankfully uh, Charter came and fixed that. That was nice. I was able to finish. Yay! All right, and Death Sacrament. Who? He got it. All right, guys. So that's it for the day. Thank you all for stopping by, hanging out with Kamara and I. Make sure to follow Kamara if you haven't already. Oops. Same goes for you guys. But on my side, make sure to follow IR Sculpts if you haven't followed him. Yep. So Oops, Coral will be cool right. on the base. Oh. Definitely have to do that. All right, Ryan. Thanks so much, Ninar. See you guys later, Snickles. All right, everybody, take it easy, and chat with you all later. Bye, 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 bye.